Hello, my name is Rachel Norris and today we're going to work through a tutorial for making a beautiful rose garland necklace design. Here it is in the copper colourway with the roses and I'm going to work through every single element used in making up the design. The roses, the leaves, the connecting jump rings, how to make the leaf connectors at the back, and even down to making up the clasp at the back of the necklace and the little dangles from the side. We're also going to learn how to infill um, the design with beads as in the earrings and also there's a silver colourway which I'm wearing so you can actually see how beautifully and comfortably it sits around the neckline. I'm wearing the earrings as well which are lovely and light and easy to wear and have a lovely dangle and movement to them. Um, and the silver version is made slightly differently um, to the copper version so you can see a different way of making it and um, bring the design together. So I really look forward to seeing what you make and let's get started. Here I've laid out the rose necklace and earrings for you to see um, the entire design that you're going to make. Um, I'm going to go through in the tutorial how to make all the roses um, and show you how to make them in different sizes. I'm going to show you how to make the little leaf dangles that you'll need for the necklace and for the earrings and um, also the larger leaves um, for the side components of the necklace. I'll also show you how to make the clasp um, and the little dangles and even the jump rings um, and the assembly of the necklace as well. And moving on to the earrings, um, I'll show you how to fill in beads into the smaller frames, the rose frames to fill, fill out them out and give them some colour. Um, I did forget to say in the ingredients that um, you'll need um, earring hooks in the ingredients so when I list the ingredients later just make sure you add in some earring hooks or shepherd hooks um, into your um, ingredients list. So we're going to move on to the um, ingredients and, and the tools and work through what you need to make up the designs. I'm just going to go through um, the ingredients that you need uh, to make up the designs and the first part um, of course is the wire and you'll need a, four different um, diameters and I've got one millimeter diameter, 0.8 millimeter diameter, 0.4 and 0.25 millimeter diameter wire and the one millimeter and 0.8 millimeter diameter wires are used for the frames in the main necklace um, and the earrings for the 0.8 and the 0.4-0.25 millimeter wire is used as the wrapping and binding and, and bead adding wire. Um, you can substitute the, the two wires. If you only have one gauge, you can work with um, just one of them. You can get away with it, um, but it's quite nice to have both options available for more delicate work with the 0.25 and stronger um, binding capability with 0.4. Um, the beads, um, just got to make sure when you buy your beads, um, that the 0.4 millimeter wire will go through it. If not, the 0.25 definitely will. I've chosen a rose gold um, plating um, over silver and over copper. So it's a really lovely uh, wire color. Um, you can use natural bare copper. You can use silver, uh, silver plated or sterling silver, of course. You can go use, use gold tones and gold plated silver wires. You can use all sorts of colors to make up the design. It works really well. Now, with the beads that you need to have, you can go for gemstone options or you can go for seed bead options, So, which is, which is fantastic. So with the seed beads, you'll need 11 O's in um, a peridot sort of green colour. Um, I haven't got the green seed beads here for that. Um, I've got the natural peridot, but you can see the shade that you need. And for the pink, um, for the beads, um, you can use... Um, Dusty Rose, it's a Dusty Rose Mayuki, um, which is 1194238 is the code. And it's a lovely colour. Um, uh, or you can go for a more um, lighter pink, a shade pink if you want. Um, with the gemstones, I used a Peridot 2mm faceted um, and a Rose Quartz 2mm faceted sea bead. And they're just so beautiful. So if you want to work in natural gemstones, you've got the option. And if you work in seed beads, you've got all the shades that you need, as long as you use 11 O's. There are some optional dangles that you can put in there. 
um, you don't have to in this design uh, I've got them at the back of the necklace and if you do use them you can use some four millimeter round pearls or four millimeter peridot um, anything like that um, to put in extra dangles into your design but these are not essential if you are using uh, dangles you'll need some head pins as well um, ball end head pins um, but you, this this part of the kit I suppose is not essential it's mostly there's 11o or two millimeter um, beads and the wire um, and you'll be you'll have everything you need to make up the design so we're now going to move on to the tools that we need um, to work with I've just found um, this seed bead alternative to the natural peridot strand um, it's um, um, an extra pale green uh, Mayuki 11O seed bead code 19371 um, and uh, that's the jewelry maker code AVBD39 um, and that would match with, with the peridot and the um, the green the pink replacement for the rose quartz that I've got is the dusty rose 1194238 NVBD 76 and those would work very well in the design but um, in the first design I've got here I've got uh, um, rose quartz and peridot um, two mil um, beads so two millimeter diameter beads um, so you can go for natural gemstone look or you can go for a seed bead look um, and make the same design up with the wire for the silver rose necklace um, you'll need um, silver plated um, copper wire or sterling silver wire in the same gauges 1 millimeter, 0.8 millimeter, 0.4 millimeter and either 0.25 or 0.3 millimeter depending on what um, you can work with sterling silver 0.3 millimeter is fantastic and nice and strong but also delicate um, and for the seed beads you'll either need sterling silver um, two millimeter and three millimeter beads, or eleven o, um, or and eight o Duracoat um, or galvanized silver Mayuki seed beads, and you can see the the code sitting in here if you need to take a screenshot. Um, I'll show you the silver necklace in a few moments. I'm now going to go through the tools that you'll need to make up the projects with. Some of them are duplicates of the same type of tools so that you can see um, what you've got in your toolbox to use. But the main um, essential tools for working with the wire are these pliers here. The first one I'll go through is the chain nose pliers, which are pliers with flat edges and tapering tips. And they're great for um, moving and shaping the wire and for flattening bits of wire and for clamping and making bends and all sorts of wire forming activities. They're, they're, the, they're really useful. I've got two pairs also because I use them to open and close jump rings. Um, I also use round nose pliers, which are um, pliers with round conical tapering tips. I yet like to have them with very small narrow tips at the end so you can make really tiny little curls and they're used for wire forming curls and loops and things like that, nice round shapes. And they're ever so useful for that sort of thing. And you use, uh, make large loops at the base and smaller loops at the tip. Um, the third plier here is a flush cutter plier. They're used for trimming and cutting your wire and for making jump rings. And I'll show you um, how this is used in the later stages. But you can see that it has a nice flat edge here. And this is the end that you need to present to your end that you want to finish. Because when you cut like this, it produces a lovely flat end of the wire. If you um, cut with the wrong side, this side, which has a little sort of um, triangular shape to the pliers, you'll end up with a triangular shape at the end of your wire. And you, you don't really want that. It'll be quite rough. So always present this flat edge to the, the, the wire you end you want to finish off. But they're beautiful. And um, just get some good high quality flush cutter pliers uh, for use in your wire working. Um, the other thing you'll need, of course, are, um, is a, a, a bead mat or something to work on. Um, I use this wonderful beadsmith sticky bead mat because the, the beads don't roll about and, the, and it's got measurements and all that sort of thing. It's really, really useful. So I love it. And a nice soft surface so you don't um, um, break or mark things by being on a hard surface. 
Um, I always have a, a ruler and a pen of paper with me to measure out things and to draw templates and shapes and um, tick off on lists what I've done. So pen and paper essential. Um, you'll also need um, a range of hammers. You can just get away with one. So um, hammers, um, you can have them in different weights and sizes. Um, and I use this sort of larger faced hammer for the larger um, surface of wire um, where you want to hammer the whole thing at once and these smaller faced hammers one ounce and two ounce hammers here um, for getting into smaller spaces and for hammering more delicate pieces perhaps um, and also getting keeping your hammer face away from um, wrapped pieces of wire that you don't want to hammer um, and these so I use a range of hammers but again you can get away with just using this one just using the edge of things uh, um, and keeping things well away from work that you don't want to hammer so um, I have a range of hammers but if you have to um, just use what the hammer that you've got just make sure it's got a nice smooth face so it doesn't mark the wire you need to hammer against a steel block um, and I've got a steel block here and this lovely smooth face um, creates the smooth face or surface on the wire when you hammer it and hammering wire can uh, work hard on it which means you're um, creating strength um, in very loose wire you, you're given very soft wire to work with because it's all the atoms are having very little um, attachments between them and it's lovely soft and fluid but you want to create strength in the piece so hammering a piece of wire uh, will um, create more bonds between the molecules or atoms in the wire and the whole wire piece will be stronger and if you hammer even more you create a lovely flattened surface and that flat, flat and reflective surface is beautiful um, and can catch the light and be really a lovely addition to your piece and thicken the wire and do all sorts of things thicken the flat surface of the wire um, and make it uh, present more light to the to the beholder so hammers and steel blocks the other thing that you'll need are something to make the jump rings with and you can use gizmo mandrels as well which i haven't got here with me but um, you can see that I've got these step mandrels they're great for for just making small amounts of jump rings and I'll show you in one of the parts of this tutorial how to make those um, so we'll go through that as well so I think that's all the tools if I come up with anything else during the tutorial I'll, I'll pop it in there um, but those are the things that you'll need to to complete the project so we're now going to move on to um, look at the templates and how to form some of the wire frames Here are the templates that you'll need to use to make up the frames with. Um, and if you want to, just take a camera still or a screenshot of, of the templates here and then print them out. Um, and just make sure that this ruler, um, the first bit is the straightest bit. So one to maybe four or five are the best um, parts of the ruler to use to make sure you print them out to the right scale. So when you print them out, um, I, I usually copy and paste the image into Word and then print them out various sizes. And then what you need to do is just make sure the first um, one to four or one to five centimetres line up with your ruler um, exactly. And you can adjust the image size and print out again until you've got it right. Um, and then you've got your template that you can use to make up the necklace to exactly the same scale. Um, so you've got various sizes of roses here with um, a blue line and a red line. I'll show you how to um, make up, um, use those lines to form the rose frame in a minute. Um, there's one main central, which is the largest rose size, two for the sides, so it's a medium size, um, two smaller side roses, and a very smaller um, earring component here. And you use one millimeter wire for the larger rose frames and 0.8 millimeter wire for the, for the earrings. Um, and with these lines, the blue line is for making up the kind of more ornate petal frame shape. And there's a red inner spiral that kind of forms the inner, inner part of each petal. And you bind these all together when you make up the rose. Um, on the right here, you've got um, two leaf frame templates that you can use against the same scale. Um, a large one, a smaller one, made almost exactly the same way. The larger one is made in one millimeter wire frame, and that's a 0.8 millimeter wire frame. And, and these lines are used to help you um, 
just gauge the, the right length for the wire tails that you use. So just take a screenshot and, um, and print it out and then you need to move on to the next part um, of the tutorial where we're going to start making the frames for the roses. We'll do the roses first and then the leaves. Here is the template um, showing um, the wire frames that I've made for the necklace over it um, and just showing that you need one main central, two medium sized sides and two smaller sides and this smaller one is of course for the earrings which we'll make later in a later stage of the tutorial. And I'm just going to show you how to make one of these roses up because they're all made in exactly the same way. Use the blue line um, for a sort of jagged petal outline and then a red line for an inner spiral. Um, these um, have to be made in mirror image but it's really easy because all you do is make the same the same um, over the same template and I'll show you how to hammer them in opposite directions so that they um, and, and fold the spiral around so that they sit nicely in the mirror image uh, in later stages so you just use the same template and I'll show you how to make the mirror image later on so we're going to use uh, maybe this large central one um, just as a good example because um, you can actually see probably a bit more of what we're doing, but they're made in exactly the same way. Um, so I'm going to start off. Um, oh, yes, I must tell you the wire lengths you need. You need 60 centimetres um, of one millimetre wire for the large rows. You need about 50 for the side roses, each of them. Two smaller sides, you need 40, millimetre, 40 centimetres length of one millimetre wire. And for these earrings, you need about 30 centimetres of 0.8 millimeters wire for the small connectors. And if you want to make them up, um, it's just easier to bend the wire and fold them in these smaller smaller um, folds with, if you've got the smaller gauge wire and they're lighter for earrings as well. So um, it's quite a lot of folding and curling and, and moving, but it's quite repetitive. And once you get the idea, um, it's not, um, you know, what you've got the technique in the first uh, few bends, you'll be all right. So starting off, we want to make a curl in the center. So I'm going to bring up my round nose pliers. I'm just going to make a little circle right at one end of the wire that I've cut. You can see that circle is, is a P shape. It's not really quite good enough to be, um, it won't curl into a circle nicely. You've also got a bit of ragged end. So I'm going to trim off the end until I'm left with a bit that's nice and circular. Like so. And I'm going to recurl that center fairly near the tip of my round nose pliers so I've got quite a small little circle. I'm also going to continue curling a little bit because the first bit of wire is ending up, ends up being quite work hardened and it's easier to pull the whole length of wire to make it form its shape than to try and form shape it really close to where it's um, work hardened. Um, so we've got this little cow and this is going to fit we're going to start shaping over the blue line on the diagram and what I'm going to do is just slightly zoom in the picture now and then shift this around so it's in position in the center so you can see what I'm doing a bit more with my hands so that's that's a bit good right then so I'm now going to form the first petal I'm going to hold this quite um, this central loop over the center of the diagram I'm going to work on the blue diagram blue line and I've already pulled the wire around holding the wire firmly here pulling it around into position over this blue line I'm going to use that as a guide. I'm going to make a gentle bend first of all, um, just to check its position. Yes, it's it's right. And then I'll make the firmer bend with the chain nose pliers. I'm going to take it off the paper to help me make the firmer bend. And the reason why I do a soft bend first is because if you repeatedly bend in one place, um, you can fracture the wire if it's over work hardened. So always make a soft bend first, then check. So I've made that bend and you can see I squeezed either side to actually narrow up that bend even more. So I made a bend first of all with the with the push of the pliers. I'll do that again for another one so you can see more what I'm doing. And I made another side to side squeeze just to really push that into place. Next thing we're going to have to do is grip quite tightly here, quite close to the first bend you made, make a second bend. It's almost like a little zigzag in the wire. So you can see I've got the position right. So I'm going to take that off the paper and I'm going to make another side to side squeeze to really tighten that up. You may need to slightly change where that bend is so I'm going to check its position. 
if it's sometimes it ends up being too long or too short it's not the end of the world but you want the whole rows to sit nicely and fit together properly that's about right so I'm going to squeeze that into position a bit more with a side to side squeeze and I'm going to pull the wire around holding really really close to where that, that zigzag bend is round to the next one you see and follow that blue line and what I'm going to do is grip again close to where I want that bend to be and curve it round with my hands first of all and again you can take it off the paper if you like but I can just use a side to squeeze, side squeeze there pretty good that's not such a tight bend so it's one of the easier ones to make then I'm going to make that is going to be too long so I'm going to take it off the paper I want to place the bend a little bit closer to the first bend so I'm going to rotate it you can rotate the piece in your hand you find it easier to work from one side and uh, you can rotate and then put it back down again I have to do it slowly so I don't come out of the camera shot so I mean normally you'd work um, with things very close to your eyes wouldn't you um, but we can't do that when I'm just filming so it's sometimes a little bit more difficult so bear with me on that one so another zigzag squeezing either side of the bend to make it sharper grip closely to the bend and pull the wire around now here you can see I've distorted the wire a little bit so you're going to have to sort that out so you can either move it with your fingers or a gentle shaping of the plants I'm gripping just gently and pulling the wire out into a circle let's see if that's made it a little bit better almost so and I can squash a little bit over where it's curved too much I have a gentle squash to pull it out into place so these are things tricks you can use just to reshape the wire this gentle gentle shaping so I'm using the very tips of my pliers and I'm going to pull that back into position just make sure it fits nicely over the blue line I'm going to do one more zigzag and then I'm going to leave you for the minute um, and come back ready to form one of the loops just to show you the techniques of that. So I'm going to do this a little more quickly. You see, using exactly the same techniques to make that so zigzag bend with squishes and squashes. I'm going to turn the camera off and come back to you when I've got to this loop here so I can show you exactly how to form the loop. Right, so we're now at a point where I've zigzagged all the way around the blue line being really careful to follow the blue line as closely as possible because I want to be able to make sure this this red line will fit in into the shape quite nicely and then I'm ready to make a loop so gripping near where I want to make the loop again you make that soft bend first of all check it's in the right place yes it is and I can get, make a sharper bend by slightly clamping near the bend itself just to sharpen this up I'll bring in some round nose pliers and I want to make these loops fairly similar so just make sure when you make all the roses that you make them at the same height along the pliers and you can do it fairly near the base so it makes it easier to judge it now just pull the wire around I'm just catching it on one of my light wires so bear with me pull the wire around The base of the pliers with your with one hand so you're gripping the wire here near the base of the loop and then oh gosh i'll come around okay camera i'll do it again so you're gripping the wire near the base of the loop with the bit with the round nose plier round nose plier jaws and i'm pulling the wire around slowly with my hand turn the pliers a little bit just adjust it make sure that loop is the, the right size um i just make sure they're all the same size for all the different um, roses I make so I'm going to make it a touch smaller just with a little movement of the chain nose pliers pulling it inwards that way and you can make it bigger by by turning the pliers in the other direction you can do the same thing with the round nose pliers because I'm working with chain nose pliers now to finish off the loop I'm going to make to make a sharp bend near the base of the loop pulling the wire away with my hands now you can see that loop it then isn't quite at the right place so I'm going to change it slightly very slight movements of my pliers I mean quite tight so I just keep my hands really still so I don't move it around too much but I can see I'm just slightly nibbling away small small movements I brought that into place in the right place now I'm going to just check the loop is at the right angle so I'm going to put that back on the diagram you can see actually it's a bit droopy so what I'm going to do is slightly bend that loop upwards with a little bend upwards 
of the gen nose plier, moving the wire upwards, and now that's at the right angle. And I can then also it needs a bit of clamping, very very gentle clamp because I don't. Well, I will be work. Well, I will be flattening this piece later on. But actually, if you need to learn the technique of just moving it gently, if you don't want to flatten it, you just want to keep the wire fairly round. So it's a gentle squeeze, gentle squash, just to make sure it lies fairly flat, and it's easier to work with then on this particular project. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to carry on the zigzagging and folding and bending techniques um, of this rose. And I'm going to carry on round the diagram using those same techniques, following the blue line on the diagram, hopefully. And um, I'll meet you when you see how I'm just gently moving this round. Just a little squash and bend and pull with your fingers. Try and work with your fingers as much as possible. because it, it means that you, work, work, you mark the wire less. And I'm going to meet you when I've come to this end of this blue line here. I'll also just adjust the size of this diagram, of this um, point on the diagram here, sorry. I'm just going to adjust this bend here. Now, um, quickly before I do that, I'll just mention these folds and bends for the smaller roses are much, so it can be more difficult to form. So be really, really careful as you do them. In fact, I'll show you a technique that you can use when you're making the smaller folds. You can do a bend and maybe not tighten it up so much and do another bend. It's easier to get into position when you do the other bend. Then you can tighten that bend up. And it's easier then to tighten this bend up, having made a positional bend for the other one. So that's another way of doing these little bends and folds, especially when they get smaller and tighter on the smaller roses. Now, I'm going to meet you in a, in a few minutes when I've worked around to this end of this blue line. I'll show you how to form the red line part of the diagram. Right here you can see I've worked all the way around the rows, following the blue line as best I can and I've reached a point where I'm going to make a bend. And the reason why I'm trying to follow the blue line as best I can is because I want this rose, this red line to fit in in between the spaces and fit in nicely to the centre. Um, I mean, we can't all be perfect. And in fact, actually, these roses are meant to be very organic. And even in mirror image, you're going to have slight differences between the roses. It's, and it's not the end of the world. It's, it won't show, it won't notice. All you'll see is wonderful swirls of, of rose patterns across the necklace. Even with, with the earrings, try and be make it the same size and the same general position of the bends. But just try and make sure that... Um, uh, but it's not the end of the world if you're slightly out of place. So we're now going to form the inner circle. So I'm just going to make a slight bend in the wire just at the point where I need to, to start forming the, the red line. And I'm going to slightly bend this upwards now, away. And that's ready for hammering later on, you see. There we go. I'll be showing you how to hammer in, in mirror image and all of that at a later stage. So, um, and do all that. So first of all, we're just going to get the, bend this out of the way. And then just going to bend this, bend this round. There we go. I'm going to start to follow the red line. So I've made that bend, um, and I'm going to bend this away so you can see that I can really have a clear uh, run at working on this red line without this other frame getting in the way. We can be, we'll be bending it down, down later on, but actually we need it also bent away so we can hammer hammer the um, zigzag rose frame and not the spiral frame in later stages. So I'll show you how to be doing that in another stage as well as the mirror image um, techniques of getting them in mirror image. So you can see I'm just pulling the wire around and the wire tail is brilliant because it helps you pull Pull the wire around um, and not handle the wire too much, although I, you can see I'm using pliers for speed really, to be honest. Um, and because I'm also working away from the, the piece because I've got to show it to camera. Um, and just pulling it around 
You see, really, if you use your hands, you're just making a very gentle spiral. And then you use the pliers when you absolutely have to. This is a little bend, make the sharper bends. And this technique of making outer to inner spirals is ever so useful for filling spaces. Because normally when you make a spiral, don't you? You, make, you work from the inside and work outwards. Um, but in this case, we're doing it the other way around. It's just a useful technique to, to do, be able to do. Um, because often you can fill a space without knowing the length of why you, you need to have by working from outer to inner. I'm just going to go very gently into that centre. Very gently into that centre. And just make that a little bit smaller perhaps. Because we'll need these little central spirals to fit over each other. Yeah, just a little bit smaller. Pull it in. And I'm going to cut as close as I can without cutting the wire next to it. Because that would be a bit of disaster. If necessary, take the wire off the diagram so you really make sure you don't cut that little bit of diagram of a little bit of uh, wire there. Um, we're going to move on to the hammering stages, and um, in the next stage, so I form the red spiral now. Um, that basically fits. You can do a little bit of shaping to make sure it's a gentle, proper, gentle curve, proper circular spiral, really, I suppose. Um, and um, I'll come back to you in the next stage for the hammering. Now we're going to hammer um, this rose shape. Um, because this spiral needs to sit behind this, this particular rose, I'm going to hammer the back of the rose shape as it's folded. So it's quite easy to have the, the spiral upwards. If I'm doing a mirror image rose shape, which I'll show you in another, another uh, little clip, um, I'd be turning it over and hammering the other side and then I show you a technique of just making sure that this spiral then just folds this this way in front of the in front of the rows. But if I'm hammering from this direction, you can just hammer fold the spiral back over. Anyway, I'm going to hammer it now. Um, I'm going to use large face hammer and just make sure you don't hammer any cross sections of wire. You're hammering them around the whole shape. to make sure that I hammer a little bit more around these edges um, just to make it look a little bit flatter and, and wider and, and create a difference in, in thickness here. So you can see I'm doing a little bit more hammering around the edges. Just going to move it round so that I don't hammer that spiral. Sorry, I don't hammer the, the simple spiral. You can move all these things back afterwards. Move it out of the way of your fingers. Right. Now I just need to hammer this edge here. So I'm going to turn this round. Now what I might do is just pull this, this fold this spiral down into position. Because it's going to be easier to hammer this last little bit with the spiral out of the way. So let's do that now. And then just hammer that last little bit, pulling everything out of the way. Lovely. Got that last, last little bit done. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm just going to check over the diagram now. And I've folded the spiral behind the shape. So that the flattest, lovely surface is on the surface, is on the top. And the... Um, um, a mark, more marked side, which is likely to be the side you actually had the hammer on. Although, I, because I've used a lovely large faced hammer, you've really got fairly few marks. If you use a small faced hammer, you'll get a few more hammer marks in there. Um, so I'm going to just going to manipulate this this inner circle so it fits nicely into those other petals. It might just need a little bit of because it might have been distorted a little bit. When you fold it out, you just need to gently circle, make it circle again. And because when you hammer, you slightly splay the wire, the wire gets sort of fatter, I suppose, um, and splays a little bit. It might just take a bit of manipulation to get this to fit inside. But you can see now, you can get this to fit. And when we start to attach, well, sorry, I'm just moved over a little bit too much. Um, when we, you can see how I'm starting to move this into position, so the spiral fits into position here 
and when we start to attach the spirals together they will fit much more closely into position and they'll start to fit together so just make sure that these two central spirals fit over each other nicely there you go and then we can the rest will fit into place as we start to attach them together because we'll just be making sure that the wire sits side by side so that's the large rose done and um, i'll show you in the next section how to do the mirror image uh, roses just so that you, you can see the folding techniques i'll do that on one of the smaller sides i think um, and then uh, we'll carry on with the tutorial so to reiterate when you're making the the side roses in mirror image um, you can make them in the same way as the other all roses using the blue line template to make the zigzag jagged outer rose shape bending the that upwards in exactly the same way and then forming the red spar the spiral over the the inner spiral over the red shape but you just need to hammer them in a different way and then fold the wires back down in a different way and i'll show you that again so you can be absolutely sure that i did make it slightly muddling when i explained it on the slightly larger roses so one rose will need to hammer the front and one ham rose will need to hammer the back um, so I'm just going to hammer the back and show you how to do that. I'm using a large face hammer to get it done quickly. Less control over where I'm hammering. Just make sure you don't hammer any cross pieces of wire like that. Don't do that. Whatever you do. And then just hammer this outer, outer section. And then because I've hammered that as the front, nice reflective surface, I want this inner spiral to fold in at the back here. Just making sure the spirals go round in the same way. With this one, just make sure the central loops um, are in the same um, place and then just slightly move this around a little bit. Just make sure the frames lie over each other nicely so that you don't have any overlapping of the frames. You'll be able to make sure that happens a little bit more when you're doing the attachments in later stages. And just reshape that in the spiral there a little bit. Okay, the next thing to do is we hammer the other one and we're going to hammer the other other face. So remember we hammered the back of the back of the shape, but this one we're going to hammer the front or the, in the other orientation. So I have to place it over the side this time. And it's easier over the edge of a table really because this is going to be facing downwards. Um, but I can't do that for this demonstration. So you'll just have to, I'll just have to bend it over a little bit more. But the spiral's facing downwards rather than upwards. Sorry, the inner spiral. Just going to ha hammer again. And because this is now the nice hammer, the, the nice uh, flat surface shape, I'm going to fold the spiral behind. I'm just slightly orientate it so it fits behind the other one. Just making sure again the spiral's in the same direction, like a sort of Catherine wheel direction. I need to hammer that side a little bit there, so I'm just going to do that now. And then I'm just going to take the block away and just manipulate this again. I need to make sure this is um, mirror image to the other one. Just make sure you do. Make sure that is the case. So when I do that, yes, that's mirror image. So this spiral sits at the back of this one. And this will be mirror image to the other one I've made. There we go. And the little doggy's barking just on cue. So now you can see I've got all... Um, 
five of the roses made for the necklace one central form um, two medium size and two smaller size and the mini earring sizes we haven't made yet because they're for the earrings um, and those are all ready to start um, working on of course we're going to wire the spirals together um, to form these rose shapes and I'll do that in the next step Right, I need to wire this rose um, together into position so this structure becomes straight, stable. But I also wanted to pop wire in so it wasn't too obtrusive um, into the whole design. Um, and you can use 0.25mm wire or you can use 0.4mm wire. And I just found 0.25 was lovely and delicate, but it can be a little bit awkward just to sort of, um, to um, maybe clamp down against the sides of the structure but it it um it produces a lovely delicate effect but i'm going to use 0.4 millimeter wire in the in the demonstration um and first of all i picked a point where i felt i could anchor the whole um the whole design into position first of all so i made sure um the whole thing sat nicely side by side so I put manipulate and pulled this little frame out into position so that I felt the inner spiral was sitting nice and side by side except for the inner spiral that will sit over um, the flattened one will sit over the, the unflattened circular spiral so I'm going to pick a point let's pick a point I want to also make sure that these if you because if you anchor in the wrong place you could distort look you can distort where the loops are so I want to make sure the loop same place so I'm going to pick a spot maybe say here where I'm going to make sure that the loops stay in position. So I'm going to anchor between these two points and work around maybe so I can anchor this one. So I'm going to pick, choose this about a 25 centimeter length of wire and I'm going to thread it in between these two points and the shorter length of wire I want to go in this direction because I, I don't need as much. I need longer lengths to work it down that side of the wire so I'm going to go for the maybe seven centimeters from one end and leave the rest of the, the other work so making sure everything's held next to each other hold closely to where you're working to keep it flat and just start to wrap around these two sections I'm really squeezing tightly next to these this point where I'm wrapping to keep the wires lying side by side with one hand and I work with the other maybe three or four wraps around here um, I work with the other hand then keeping those wires slide by side so I'm now just going to wrap along just the inner spiral just before five wraps because I'm not going to do too much more on this side let's see and you could wrap the whole way around that inner spiral of wire catching the zigzags that's another way of doing it I've done that on other designs but I also felt that you get away with leaving just short attachment points work just as well. So I'm nearly there. Let's get to maybe I want to do four or five wraps. If it gets too too difficult to pull through with a short length of wire, I use your pliers and use your pliers to pull through. And that can do if you're losing your grip, perhaps you haven't got as strong a grip as you used to. Use your plier ends to help you do that. Um, so that's about right. I'm just going to squeeze either side of this little bit of wire just to squeeze the um, wraps up closely together. I'm going to pop the pliers in really close to the inside surface of the wire. These, these are flush cutter pliers cutting close to that inner surface. And then I'm just going to smooth the wire end down with a smoothing motion. You can see me just gently smoothing around in the direction of the wire end. So it really smooths down against the wire clamping it. Um, I'm just going to carry on wrapping on here just to complete the wraps. Make sure you squash them so they're flat. Five wraps is enough. Then I'm going to carry on on the inner inner wire only and carry on a little bit and just nip myself with the wire so bear with me. I might be bleeding a little bit. Sorry everyone. Occupational hazard. Let me see, I just want to make sure all the time you're making sure the frames lie side by side. You can pull them into place and pull them into position. Let me see, I'll probably just work along this for a little bit longer until I can get 
to that little point where I feel that that zigzag can touch against there and I can attach it. So let's keep on going. Now to keep those wraps and tightly compressed, squeeze side by side. You can see gentle squeeze with the, with the chain nose pliers. I'm also just going to make sure this lies flat. Gentle squash will make sure that this now lies by side by side and this little wrap is flattened just gently, not too hard on the fracture of those wires. Let's keep on going. And this is a similar technique to all the attachments all the way around. I'll um, probably skip some and show you some where they're sort of essential points. But when you, um, I'll, uh, I'll give you a sort of still shot, I suppose, at the end where you can freeze frame it, take a screenshot um, of all the raises, in fact, so you can see exactly where I put the attachment points. And if you can get them vaguely the same around the whole thing, that'd be great. So I'm just going to make sure this little zigzag now, which I think could be just about attached, is in position. I'm going to pull that into place with an attachment. That's lovely. Good. That will start to work. See, I'm using my fingernails, which I do occasionally. Uh, not everybody has strong enough nails to do that. If not, use your pliers, but again, be gentle um, with the pliers so that you don't fracture it. I only need a few wraps here. Make sure I haven't overlapped anything because I'm working quite quickly and far away from my eyes just so you can see the, with the camera. And then I just wrap along. I'm going to pull quite tightly into here so I can push into the space so it separates that petal a little bit. You'll need more wraps around the frame if you're using 0.25mm wire and less wraps with 0.4 just because the 0.25 is obviously thinner. And you need more for strength than occupying the actual space itself. So that's the other difference that if there is between the wires. 0.25 is lovely and it's so delicate and it but has and it's strength in numbers. So um, lots of wraps and you have a really strong attachment. The only disadvantage, I suppose, is just smoothing it down, making sure it stays down. If you smooth down a 0.4 millimeter wire, it's quite it's really good at staying put. So that I think is enough wraps around here. I'm just going to cut, we've got about five or seven or eight wraps down. Using those flush cutter pliers, I'm cutting really close to that inner surface. And then I'm going to do that smoothing motion. Oh gosh, what I should have done was just do a quick squeeze and squash into position. Squash that. Can you see I've squashed that double that wrap around both frames? Just to make sure it's squashed into position and it stays put. So that's that attachment. So we've got the first attachment in place for this rose. You can really see how it's already starting to hold together. I'm going to work around doing a few more and I'll show you exactly where I put them. And with the central one, I think I'll work through showing you because that's pretty sort of um, just a bit important to make sure you, you put, put the wires in the right place. So I'll come and do those. Um, and basically, it doesn't really matter now um, in what order you do them because you've got that first placement. You know exactly where it should be. So I'm probably going to do this one next and then work around this, some of these outer ones here and then work on inwards. Um, and that's how I'm going to do it. So I'll come back to you um, when I've done all those and I'll show you the central one just to make sure you've got it in the right place. Here you can see I've added in um, another... Um, area of wrapping here. Um, I haven't worked on this area yet, but I'm just going to work on this area because I want to pull these together. I've added some white wire into this section here and I've worked down to an area where I need to just pull this downwards into position. So this is where you might need to just add a bit of pressure and this is where the 0.4 millimeter wire is perfect for cinching them together. Just be a bit more careful when you're adding in 0.25 millimeters of wire. So so again, pull that into place. You can see everything, the structure pulling into place here now. So one wrap and then the next wrap will really, really make sure that pulls into place. There we go. That's a bit more. So I'm sort of having to speak and pull at the same time. Thread it through and just make sure the wraps lie right next to each other. They're really neat and tidy. And line up nicely and not not crossing over each other just watch where you place each wire 
and I think we could then just make sure yeah that's fine and I'm going to pu pull that to um, wrap together with some more pressure of the next wrap and I'm going to really press that wrap around this the single wire close against the wraps around both wires just to really hold them in place and work along about seven or eight wraps and then I'll do that little technique of smoothing down the cut end just to show you that again because it really is important you get these smooth smooth as possible against the side of the frame so that they don't come loose during wear and if you're concerned about that just work all the way around this inner spiral catching the jagged ends where they touch and that's another way of doing it and it creates a lovely effect um, that way as well so it just takes a bit more time but you only have one set of ends to deal with so it has its benefits from that point of view so if you have plenty of 0.4 millimeter wire and a bit more time work all the way around so let's get that into position let's make sure that's not crossing cut that really really close to the frame with the with the tips of the flush cutter pliers in place now we're just going to really take our time just plenty of smoothing around you can see me just smoothing round the side both directions and it's like this sort of movement can you see me just moving the pliers around just pressing the wire into and against the, the side of the frame then run your fingers along it and make sure it'll squash on all the wraps you can see that's slightly projecting so I want to even that up a little bit. That should be fine now. Right, so we're going to just work our way around the rows and I'll be back with you and when I've done a few more. I've now worked my way all the way around the rows. I've now worked I've now worked my way all the way around the rows, adding in binding points where the little zigzags touch against the swirl, the single swirl. And I've just got two more points left to attach here and here. Um, and as I've um, pulled these points in for attachment, I've also, you know, you had to pull the frame in a bit as well to, to do that. And also I'm just going to reshape the loop a little bit and squish the base of this loop together so that um, when you attach the jump rings later on, that won't the jump rings won't fall out of these little gaps here so we're just going to now just work through this attachment here and you'll just have to be a little bit careful but you can see a nice swirl here these little circles have fitted together well if for any chance they don't um, we just put the pliers into the center of the circles and just make sure they line up nicely in case that's something you can do if they don't quite do that so we're just going to work on one side i've got two points to work at and i'll show you the final finished one in a minute when and um I'll go through the final sum up there so here we go and just popping through the center center circle with the wire and with the 0.4 millimeter wire i'm going to bind around all three frames at this point so this is that final point of making sure everything um, binds together in fact actually this side you can see when I wind on this side, you're, just, you're going to be going towards this point here. So it's all quite working naturally together. And again, when you see the stills um, or you can take the screenshots of um, these attachments, you'll be able to hopefully be able to place them in virtually the same place. Now, with this point, we've just got to um, attach the wire around the, the circle a couple of times, the inner, inner loop a couple of times. Okay, and just make sure that that um, really grips in nicely so it doesn't come apart and also doesn't overlap the previous wrap. So um, you can use, again, pliers to help you pull through the small spaces and just make sure um, that sometimes you'll catch on the ends of one of the loops. So just watch it as you go round through that area so that you only catch, you catch both of them if you can. It's not the end of the world if you if you can't. Um, do that but it just looks a bit neater so I'm just going to cut really really close in to the center if it's really difficult turn the piece over and cut from the back of the piece 
and then really make sure you fold the, the wire inwards. There's a projection of wire here, so I'm going to trim it even closer if I can. There you go, I've got a little bit of, rid of a bit more so that basically that's tucked in nicely where it's not going to catch on anything. Again, squash those wraps together and then work on the other side of that attachment in the same way. So um, another wrap round there will just improve that and then pull the wire through. I'm putting it quite hard now. Just to make sure everything's neat. Little squish. That's good. Working through both. Um, wrapping through both um, little loops. This I've got a little kink here, so I'm just have to get rid of that kink before anything happens. Otherwise, it'll just be a right pain to thread through anything. Holding quite close again to where I'm wrapping. And three wraps at least, perhaps around this area, just to make sure that this will keep its own form and not start to unravel. I mean, wire's pretty good at staying in place, actually, once you place it in place. It's just in a place where there's a bit of movement or friction against the body or clothing, that's when a wire can start to unravel. So it's worth making sure that anything, any ends are out in an area where it's not really going to be contacting anything and less likely to, to start to want to unravel itself. Now, uh, as a thought, Anybody who solders here would find it, um, who, who's watching this, would know you can solder all these points instead of wrapping. So you could um, pop your um, solder and, fl and flux all the way around here and the, against these joints and uh, solder the piece together and it would look beautiful. So that's one thing you could do. And I'd love to see um, what happens with people who do that and I'd love to see the, the effect. So work on that so what we're going to do the last thing is I'm going to just attach this last attachment here and then show you the finish rose in a moment here you can see I've worked all the way around the rose um, working and attaching um, with 0.4 millimeter wire all the areas where these little zag zigzags touch against the inner circular area of wire and I'd forgotten that bit so I had to go and quickly do that <laughs> um, so I did that one in as well a little bit there and then finally around to these areas here to the center and um, it adds enough strength without using up too much 0.4 millimeter wire I'm a bit short of it um, but here's one I've used um, I've gone all the way around the entire rows I've actually mounted it over a cabochon actually um, but you can see I've actually worked all the way around with 025 millimeter wire. So this works very really well with 025 millimeter wire so that you don't have too many wire ends. Go all the way around that circle, attaching to each zigzag point as you go around. And that worked out really well with that one. Um, and then I attached it over cabochon just by, you can either weave to it or, or um, use beads to attach to backing plate. So, that's what I did for that one. That's a different sort of tutorial, but just showing you um, the versatility of this rose shape. You can actually mount it over a cabochon and, uh, and have the leaf dangles as well. I'm now going to work on all the other roses and I'll come back when they're finished. We're now going to make um, the leaf um, components and we start off by making the leaf frames. There are two sizes of leaf um, components in the necklace and one size in the earring and the earring ones the same as the smaller ones in the necklace if you look here we've got some larger uh, leaf frames and we've got some smaller leaf frames which are the dangles um, in between the roses and they're also the dangles on the earrings and they're made really in a really similar way the templates um, for the leaf frames are here and we've got a large um, template and a small leaf template frame um, and there's a scale next to them so you can actually just print um, screenshot this and print it all out and then you've got um, a scaled um, diagram and you probably do it at the same time as you do the roses anyway but uh, there you've got one with a scale next to it. Um, you need a 16 centimeter length of 0.8 millimeter wire to make the smaller leaf components 
and a 19 to 20 centimeters i'd go for 20 and have a little bit of excess um so that you won't um run out of wire 20 centimeters of one millimeter wire for the larger leaf so we can start by making the larger leaf you can see the the, the frame that we're going to be making um, by each template so you can see what we're going to be trying to end up with so taking um the 20 centimeter length of one millimeter wire we're going to start by making a loop um, using round nose pliers and make it in, in the, right in the center right in the center of the wire so make the loop i mean you can make the loop quite large and adjust its size um, just check it against the template we can go down a little bit i'm just gonna make it a bit smaller and check it against the template and we'll just zoom in slightly so we can work from this template now. Now, um, using chain nose pliers now, just flare out the wire at the base of this loop on either side. I'm going to pick it up off the paper to help me do that. Placing the tips really close to the base of the loop to help me do that. And I'm using my fingers to help me um, just move the wires out in position. Now we can use the template for the rest of this. Now, so we've got the tip of the leaf with a little hanging loop at the base. I'm going to make that loop a little bit smaller and that, and that um, tip a little bit more flared just with a, an adjustment of the chain nose pliers. That's better. Now I'm going to use, again with this lighting at night, it's not so easy to get this to bear with me. Lighting at night, not so easy to get um, this without a shadow. So I'm going to try and move this into position a bit more so you can see. Um, so I'm going to make little bends using chain nose pliers, tips, just working with the tips, working it over the template. And you can lift it off the paper just to make the, the um, bends a little bit more marked. But it's quite easy to, to manipulate them on the paper. We're only working with a very small, small shape. And then bend round there. And then I'm just going to loop. You can use these wire tails, but you can actually just loop straight round using the paper um, template as a guide, like so. So I've got a nice top loop there. Just adjust it into position. So I pull that loop round. I'm going to do it again on the other side so you can see it again. And just gripping here very close to the base of the loop. Just move this over a little bit. There you go. Ripping here near the base of the loop. I'm going to just bend the wire tail upwards and then cut to size I'm using the dotted line as a guide. Using flush cut pliers for a little bit of excess. Now I've got one half the leaf made. You can see that there. So what I can do now is either work from the other side, but I usually tend to prefer, because I just like working from one side of a shape, it's easier than I'm left-handed. You could work from the other side of the shape if you're right-handed, for example. Um, and I'm going to work along this side of the shape again, um, making the other half of the leaf. So doing this exactly the same thing again. And it helps you get um, the leaf really symmetrical, actually. So I've got my hand in the way. Obviously, working to the camera, you can get your hands in quite unnatural angles, but really just work with whatever is comfortable for you. Um, you don't want to give yourself injuries. And just make sure you have repeated lots of breaks. Wear proper eye protection when you're working with wire and lots of breaks for your hands. And uh, then you'll have a long and, long and happy wire working life. So you can see I've made that loop again, looping around that diagram. You can use round nose pliers inserted here to make a, make a loop as well. So it's up to you. But I just found it quite easy to do that on the diagram here today. And then cut that to the, the end, like so. So we've got that leaf shape. So I've got two leaf shapes, and you'll need four of these by the way for the necklace. So I'll put this to one side for the minute, because I'm just going to show you how to make the smaller leaf shape just starting off so I'm going to use that 16 centimeter length of 0.8 wire so it's like finer wire and it's a lighter effect 
make a little bend halfway along the wire using chain nose pliers. The tips just make a sharp bend. And like so, a sharp bend. And then just, if I, what I'm going to do is just pinch that bend with the tips of chain nose pliers, a little pinch. Like I say, it makes it, sharpens it up a little bit. You can do that a little bit more if you like to make it a sharper leaf tip. Okay, put that onto the diagram and you can start shaping your leaf. So again, very in a very similar way, make little bends of that little leaf. So you're not having a leaf. The difference with this one is you don't have a leaf at the base, you see. Um, and you're working with 0.8 millimetre wire. So working, you can see how quickly you can form these little leaves. Okay. And round. And you can form the little loop. Again, I'll show you, you can actually just pick that up and form that loop using round nose pliers as well. So you don't have to use a diagram. You can see how easy that was to form round, round, round nose pliers. Um, but it's just as easy on the diagram. So it's because this wire is lovely and soft and easily malleable and easily formed into shape. Little bend upwards. And I'm just going to stop here because you don't need to see the other side being formed. It's formed in exactly the same way as the other side, but you should end up with a little leaf just like that. So we're just going to move on to the next step where we're going to um, curl the wire tails and hammer um, certain sections of the leaf frame. Another way of making a loop at the base of the leaf, which is an alternative way, um, is by um, making a bend, making a bend in the wire nearly halfway along um, and then forming a loop, loop around just beyond the bend okay and then you've already got one wire flaring out and you can grip the wire then and flare it out on the other side so that's another alternative way of making a loop at the base of the leaf like so and then you can continue with your design so um, you can either do the crossover version which i did in the first part of the demonstration or the um second or this other method is they both work really well and uh, you know you can you can they're interchangeable and it doesn't really make much difference to how the leaf ends up it's just um you may see some people working that way and another pe person working another way we've now here um got the leaf frames um in various stages. These are the ones we, we've just made using the templates and here they are with a bit more progression where I've curled the wire tails and hammered some some parts of the leaf so we're going to do that now. So I'll show you it on the the uh, large leaf here. So I'll just move these out of the way. So um, use, working with round nose plier tips, insert the tips into the uh, very end of the wire there we go, the end of the wire like so. And again on this side, little, little curl. And because the end of that curl is still straight and not curled, I, I want to, I'm going to just trim off the end of that. I want it to curl really nicely. And the end is a little bit raggedy too. So I've trimmed that with flash cutter pliers so the end will curl much more nicely. I've trimmed it from a P shape to a C shape. Reinsert the round nose pliers, and twist that in, sorry the dog's barking, there we go, and into this side, little curl, it's her whiffy time of night where she goes and, um, goes and barks at everything, there we go, so that's that curling, and I'll quickly curl the other side, uh, one, these these ones as well, and then we're going to hammer them just to show you where the, you hammer these these shapes. With this little um, leaf, you've really got to put the, the very tips of, you've got to work with the very tips of your round nose pliers. And it's really good, it's a really good idea to invest in really good quality round nose pliers with very fine tips. I'll, I tend to look for them, and even with the same brand, you'll often get them with, sometimes slightly different tips, but this one, these ones have really fine tips, one millimetre, 
to one and a half millimetre are, are ideal. So I've got them with really lovely fine tips on them to, to work with. You can see how fine they are. So again, I need to trim the little curls. Really woofy she is. And I just trim to that side. Just make sure I don't trim everything else. I can cut off what I don't want to cut off. I'm working too far away from the piece with, because I've, I've got the camera in the way. Yeah, that's that'll do. You see the little wire bits come off. Um, so again, recurl using little tiny little spiral movements, holding really close to the way you're you're moving, because this fine a wire will distort quite easily. Okay, so the next thing to do is bring in your hammer and block, and I'm using a small faced hammer just to get into areas where I need to to hammer. Um, and not uh, hammer the whole piece. You really, with this little leaf, you only want to hammer the top curls. So I'm going to do that now. And that is the front face now of this leaf. So you hammer the back, and that's the front face of that. And with a larger leaf, you hammer the base loop and the curls. Okay, let's do the base loop now. And so when you turn it over, you've got, I need to reshape that a bit better. So um, it's really better to reshape before hammering, but if you can reshape after hammering, just be really careful because it's work hardened. Just take it down really carefully. And I just want to make sure that um, these, working with chain nose flies, that these are symmetrical. So that's not quite symmetrical. I want to make sure that looks a little bit better than that. So what I'm going to do is just take that down a bit more. And that is now a little bit better, a bit more symmetrical compared to the other side. And same with this. Just work it. You may need to reshape after hammering anyway because it tends to distort the piece. And I want to make sure they're all nice and symmetrical. Let me get that one. And that one. Again, I can make that wire curl a little bit more um, closer, smaller, little adjustments to make sure they're symmetrical. That's a bit better now. So I'm going to make a few more of those and then come back uh, ready to, to add beads into the top and add some leaf veins and all sorts of things to add details to this leaf, these leaf frames. I've now made seven little leaves, um, two for the earrings and um, four larger leaf frames. And we're going to add um, beads into the spine. And these can be um, the 2mm peridot or the 11-0 um, um, green seed beads. And we're going to add um, um, pink um, beads in as berries or uh, little blossoms. Um, and they can be either um, two millimeter faceted, faceted rose quartz, or they can be um, the dusty rose or a similar pink um, 11O um, seed bead. Um, so we're going to use 0.25 millimeter wire because um, basically it has um, it can pass through the seed beads and it can pass through the gemstones because very often two millimeter gemstones um, have quite small drill holes. So we're going to work with a wire that can pass through. Um, all of those. If you feel that you want a bit more strength, you're quite welcome to work with 0.4 millimeter wire, um, and that's not a problem at all. Um, you can do exactly the same techniques and work with 0.4 millimeter wire. If you, if your seed bead, which the seed beads probably will allow two 0.4 millimeter wire through them, but I'm going to work with 0.25 millimeter wire. So let's get started. Um, we're going to start by adding some beads into the top of the leaf and um, I'm going to use about a 60 centimeter length of 0.25 millimeter wire and I'm just going to wrap the, using the midsection of the wire around the top of the leaf just once just to get some an anchor keeping the wire quite uh, sort of parallel at the top just make sure the unhammered surface is, is to the top and I'm just going to now think about perhaps finding on an, a, a little 11 0 little pink seed bead. So I'm just going to pass one wire end through the seed bead. 
and I'll pick it up and that can sit nestle down at the base here hold the seed bead in place as you bind it into place and I'm going to pass the wire again through through the seed bead again to make sure um, with strength in numbers that a double binding uh, or double wrap through will help this a seed bead stay in place so make sure that the wire doesn't wrinkle up just watch it as it goes through just catch it if it does start wrinkling and I'm just going to wrap down the side of the leaf a little way There we go. Now I'm going to work with the other wire, the other wire, and come up above the level of the first seed bead and add on another one. So we're going to add on another pink, little pink seed bead. So it'll just sit above the level. Wrap across, and you can keep it to one side. Wrap across the, to the, the above the previous seed bead you added, keeping it to one side of the other one. Just make sure it stays at the front. So we're going to do a gentle manipulation round. If it starts to slip around the back, gently, gently push it to the front so it sits in place. And then pass that wire through. This wire just started to kink up a little bit. So just stro stroke it every so often just to make sure it stays unkinked. There's 025 millimeter wire can do that. Pass the wire again once through the bead. And if you can a third time, actually, if you can um, get it through a third time, that'd be really good because just make sure you have a really good strength of attachment. Let's make sure that's wrapping around. That's lovely. Hold the bead in place with your hand. And we're gonna pop another one in, in place. I've wrapped once around um, just to keep it in place, wraps around just the frame. I notice I did that, and then I'm going to put another seed bead in there. I, I put in three in each one, so that's just going to sit next to the other one and wrapping around the loops which aren't yet attached on either side. I'm just going to pass the wire again once more through that bead to keep it really, really strong. And then we're going to do touch a little bit of wrapping around all the, the beads. But I'm pushing that one down into place so it sits like a little triangle of beads. I'm going to wrap once above on one side, a little figure eight below, and around that seed bead a little bit, just to help anchor it into place. So I'm going to wrap around the side of it, not through it this time, and through the frame, back up to the top. And you can see this helps us to, to cradle the beads on that side. There you go, that's it. And I'll do the same for the other side. There we go. And that really makes sure that sits nicely into place. Now I'm going to wrap along the side of the top of the leaf on either side until and I'm going to push this down when I'm ready, but we, until we reach a, just a level where we can start to bind to this, this loop here. And I'll, I'll uh, stop um, the video and come back when I've got to that stage. So you can see I've wrapped along either side of the top of the leaf um, with each side, at each end of the 025 millimeter wire. Just make sure you press these wraps upwards into place so they lie um, nice and neatly and tightly packed with your fingernail. Um, just press them, not with your pliers, because I think um, the 025 millimeter wire is so fine um, it can sometimes be damaged by pliers. So be a bit careful. Using a fingernail is fine. Now press this little uh, the side curl down and we're going to start wrapping around both both uh, wires here so we need to do probably about let me say about four or five wraps around both frames just making sure that the wires sit side by side and nice and flat and parallel and you can 
just gently press the wires into place with your finger. You can see me putting the, the thumb across, a little press. press. Um, again, we will use a very gentle plier pressure at the end, but not too much of that because if you do it too many times, you'll fracture these wires. So I've used five wraps so far. I might get away with another six. There we go. And then that's done. And then what I'm going to do is then just wrap along in the same way that I did, just around the leaf frame till I reach this point here. I'm going to do that on both sides and come back to and just show you um, what to do at that stage. Here you can see I've wrapped down the sides of the leaf uh, at the top with the 0.25mm wire that I've just added in and I'm just going to cut the wire close to the frame using flush cutter pliers and just take the wire, take the wire in or the flush cutter pliers tips close into the frame. Uh, I think I can probably do the, the back actually so I'm going to tip that over close to the inner edge of the frame so it's least likely to catch on anything and smooth it around on the other side do the front there wrong pliers so I'm just going to pick up the flush cutters cut close to the inside edge of the little leaf and smooth that cut end down. So now we're going to add some more wire in to the top end of this uh, leaf, just below the beads, and we're going to um, put in the leaf vein. So I'll attach that now and add some beads in and we'll talk through what we need to do for the next steps. Oh, now what I've done is I've threaded on about a metre of 0.25 millimeter wire and I'm threaded it and thread it around this um, area just below the beads and then wrapped once around um, using the midsection of the wire to anchor it in place. Now I'm going to stroke the two wires downwards so that they're, they're in parallel and I'm going to thread some um, uh, green seed beads on. Now there's a little bit of difference between whether you use the two millimeter peridots or use the seed beads. And you see because the seed beads, 11 o seed beads are a little bit smaller. I suppose if you use eight naught seed beads you might get about the same number but if you're using the two millimeter peridot, I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven peridot and I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, eleven O's um, in the peridot colour with another one wrapped on the end, which I'll show you in a minute. And that's just because they're slightly smaller in size. And you can see also the spacing of the leaf veins is different. Um, and if you look very closely and just take a screenshot of that, it'll help you place uh, the leaf veins in the correct position. Um, if you use a two millimetre um, beads, you're placing every two beads with one left at the top and with the 11 O's you're placing um, first one two up and then another three up and another three leaving one at the top so uh, the spacing is just slightly different but uh, you're going to achieve the same sort of effect right we're going to I'm going to thread those beads on um, and just onto these two wires and make sure both wires pass through each bead but just make sure to make it life easier I usually tend to trim the ends of the wire to the same length so it makes it so much easier to thread them through the beads and I also put the beads on a sticky bead mat to make them easier to pick up. Um, here I've got a, a bead mat so you can see um, it just makes the beads sit really well and sit still when you're threading both the wires through. Can you see through each seed bead and I'm gradually going to add on nine um, 11 OC beads to the wires. I'll just show you how easy it is with a bead mat. It just, um, just helps make those beads sit still while you place the wires through. I'm going to come back when I've threaded nine 11 OC beads onto the wires and I'll show you how to uh, form the leaf veins. Now here you can see that I've threaded on um, nine 
um, eleven OC beads onto the leaf veins and push them up into the leaf. And I don't mind if there's too much of a gap at this stage because when um, we form the veins, the veins will sit in between the beads and they'll push the beads apart slightly. And that means that if you have too many beads on this point and, uh, along the whole wire, you'll run out of space to add in the wires and it, everything, the, the veins will bulge for the vein spine will bulge forwards and it'll distort everything so we just need to make sure there's a bit of play in these beads because when we wrap into them that will fill up the spaces and um, that that will make it much easier to make the everything sit flat so what I'm going to do is just wrap the wire ends around the loop at the base of the leaf hold the spine in place and just wrap one wire around one side and one wire around the other side and if you want to, I'm just going to add in um, one of the peridot beads to the tip. Now, because these 11 O's are really nice and small, they'll sit nicely into the into tip of the leaf and pass um, the wire through that bead again to, for strength. And I think I also made sure that I passed it a third time through, if you can, because I've not got the, seed, the sticky bead mat Um underneath here all of these are going everywhere so forgive me um, but I felt that when I was shooting the picture um, the white background was made it easier for you to see the detail of me um, working so it was a bit of a compromise there otherwise I normally work the bead mat underneath me so three times through that bead means I have plenty of strength especially with a necklace I want a lot of strength for attachments and then you wrap once below and once, in fact, you can do that once above the bead there with the other wire. In fact, I'm going to once above there with that wire, in fact, actually to give it a bit of strength. So I've just wrapped, I'm going to do that again so you can see it once below the bead, once above to help keep it in place. I'm just going to pinch that center vein flat those wires that splayed at the top, just slightly flatten them or bring them together with pliers just so that the beads can slide up and down there nice and easily if they want to get to the tip. And then as I'm just going to wrap up each side of this leaf frame, as you can see like this, just wrapping the wires around until I get to a point where I want to add in the first set of leaf um, veins. And these veins are going to project so diagonally up the leaf and you can see here I've added the first ones in from this point where there's this little bend in the leaf um, and I've, I've started doing the leaf vein from here so I'm going to wrap on it either either side and I'll come back to you when I've done that and we'll add in the first leaf vein so you can see I've wrapped up on either side of here uh, at the base of the leaf ready and we're ready to add in the first leaf uh, veins um, oh, by the way, it, you can do this technique with 0.4 millimeter wire, and it, make, it does make us for a stronger, stronger leaf. Um, and if you do that, just add in one lot of 0.4 millimeter wire here, and just add, thread on the beads with 0.4 millimeter wire, so the central spine, and cut one end there, and just have one end going down. Wrap the 0.4 millimeter wire here, and then. Um, Bind on a bead or cut it here and then add on another set of another longer um, 0.4 millimeter wire um, at its midsection here and then use that to wrap on use wrap on up the leaf with it, making the vein so um, you can do it it just takes three sections of wire rather than two sections of wire so taking your 0.25 millimeter wire from one side pass it through the other side of the leaf space and very carefully now, I'm going to bring it here so you can see it. Pass the wire in between two beads up from the, the base. And just be a bit careful not to distort the leaf spine to one side at this point because um, you can pull it quite easily out of shape. So be a bit careful not to use too much pressure. And I've just passed it once round the spine. 
And if you want to, you can pass it around again for sort of strength here. And it fills up the gap a bit more as well. Just very carefully round. There we go. And now pass the wire up. I'm stroking the wire as I do, go, do, go along with it. So to stop it wrinkling up and, and kinking and things like that. So keep stroking the wire. I'm passing it to the front of the leaf again. And then wrapping it around the frame. Here we go. So you can see that leaf frame has just formed there. So I'm going to stop on that side for the moment. And I'm going to work with the other leaf frame or the other side again passing it to the front pass it through to the opposite opposite side of the leaf space or the spine and wrap it around oh no that's fractured um i'll have to just come back and just add another bit of wire in so bear with me i'll show you how to add the wire in because it's it's awful but Sometimes these things happen. So in a way, showing you how to avert disaster, you can either start again at the base or you can just use this stump of wire to wrap round the, the spine. Use pliers to um, place this and, and work with shorter pieces of wire. You can see how the tension now has kept, pulling from the other side has now kept that spine nice and central. That once round again, and I'm using, in fact, actually, I'm only going to wrap once here because I'll take up too much space for the beads and then wrap, pass it to the other side, totally to the front of the frame again. And again, use your pliers to, to pull the wire through small spaces, especially with short pieces of wire. There we go. And I'm going to do it wrap once more. And I'm going to find an, another piece of wire and just add it in. These disasters, these things happen all the time. And it's, it's, this is a case of adding in wire. So what I'm going to do is just um, cut here, close to the frame. Don't cut little vein and smooth that around. I'm going to go and add a piece of wire and come back in to show you what to do. I'm also going to wrap up this side to the next stage. Of adding in leaf veins so I'll come back to you when I've done that I'm starting to I've, I've wrapped up on this side with the unbroken wire and ready for the next leaf vein adding but I'm just going to quickly show you how you add in a bit of wire when you break it so I've tucked in that other bit of wire in nicely um, and I'm just added a new bit a little bit further along and I'm just going to wrap down to the first Oh, sorry, to where the, the wire broke. And then basically you just wrap along to that. And I wouldn't suggest cutting the wire in just yet because if you start to um, pull on the longer length when you're adding in a vein, you can actually unravel all the wire from the spine and it can it will start to unravel itself. Oops, not done. I've, I've gone and wrapped it round, round itself. I'm just going to, around the original wire just to make sure i don't do that let's keep that away for a minute so i'll wrap down to that um that corner and i'll show you when i've got to that stage i'll come back to you when i've done that so here we have um the leaf ready to add in the next leaf veins and obviously i've got a slight problem in that um I um, obviously had fractured that wire, so I had to add in that wire here. I've left that wire tail here for the minute, and I'll cut that after I've made the leaf vein. So I'll do that now, get the leaf vein added in. And with this one, we're going to go three up from the previous pair of leaf veins. So we're going to pass the wire again to into the opposite leaf space and very, very gently separate out three beads up very very gently separate three beads up and then wrap around once and this will help to sort of stabilize the new wire length added in um, 
because if I start to pull too much, I don't want to unravel it from the frame. So once I've anchored this, it becomes an anchor point and I'll be able to cut the other wire end of the new wire added in. So there we are. So that's that new next leaf vein added in. Just going to pull around. I'm going to, have to make sure there's, there we are, that's lovely. And I'm going to come back to this point on the corner of the leaf. So I'm ready. And I've got basically at this point, you've just got to make sure you space out those leaf veins. Don't pull it so that it, it attaches to the frame at any other point except down here. So you've really got to hold that leaf vein in place with your hand, with one hand, and then pull really close to the, the, the original wrap there and the leaf vein will sit in place next to the first or the inward one um, and the outward one will sit close to that so that's that that's done for the minute I will just wrap this round so I'll just place that here over the frame cut quite close but make sure I don't cut any other little bit of vein or, the, or else I'll be back to square one and then then press that on so that's that's press that around the frame so it, it disappears adjacent to the wraps already in place and that's how you add in why if you fracture or break it now I'm going to go and add in the other leaf vein just in the same way as we did before pass into the opposite side of the leaf Wrapping around very carefully, placing the, the the vein in between the beads. I'm just going to have one wrap around rather than a, a whole wrap around. I'm just going to basically pass it around and back. And the other one we wrapped 180 degrees around, or 360, sorry, around and then back. Pass that to the front. Again, hold both leaves, sorry, hold both veins in place. I've had a long day at work, so forgive me, I'm just not making any sense today. And pass this back through, holding these veins very carefully in place because I want that, that next wrap just to be so close to the first, the inwards ones. And I'm just going to just carefully pull that wrap round, you see, so it doesn't slip upwards and then pull. So that I'm now going to wrap up the frame ready for the last set of leaf veins. I'll come back to you when I'm ready to do that. Right, we're ready to add in the last set of leaf veins. And I've wrapped up the leaf on either side to a point where we're, I'm not quite at a bend and not quite an inner bend or an outer bend. I'm in between, um, halfway up in between the last bend here. And that just gives a nice space because I want all the the beads to be diagonal. Um, there's a couple of things I need to do. I need to push this top bead up into place as far to the top as possible with my fingernails. I'm just doing a little push that really pushes it right up to the top. And I'm also doing a little tweak to these, these leaf veins below, doing a little pressure, fire pressure to these leaf veins to bring them together and perhaps even Make them into little curves if you want to, and all sorts of different things to make them look like natural leaf veins. So you can you can you can just move them around a little bit. So I'm just going to just add in the last set of leaf veins, three beads up from the previous set. That's if you're using the 11 O's, and remember the spacing for the two millimeter beads. Um. um from the still that hopefully you've taken in, in the previous one in the previous tutorial section. So I'm just going to pull around here. Again, this, this spacing allows you to get that diagonal effect, that more natural effect of leaf veins because they don't just go straight out, they go diagonally along. So again, I'm uh, down from the spine towards the outer edge of the leaf. So I'm just pulling around this central spine very carefully. And again, try not to distort it from the midline, so make sure that you keep that spine in the midline. If you notice that that little bit has, has distorted around a little bit at the base. So what you can do, 
action bead to go over is just push it with the pliers and make sure you line it up to the midline like so. And I'm just going to wrap around the, the central spine once more and bring this, this wire around that central spine, bringing it back up through the leaf very carefully, just above that vein you've just added in, and pass it back in the same way, holding those, those, those veins very carefully between thumb or forefinger, one hand, or placing the, the return wire against the frame and wrapping it carefully there. I'm going to add in the other leaf vein to the same point using the same techniques and then I'm going to wrap along here and cut and cut the wire in using exactly the same techniques we used when we added that, that wire in before and I'm just going to wrap along to the edge of the um, the previous wraps here and cut and tuck in these wires. I'll come back when I've done that and we'll talk through that. In this final uh, stage we've I've wrapped right up to the the uh, wraps down from the top of the leaf here on both sides and I've wrapped so closely that you can barely see a gap between um, the two ends of the wrap so um, with this one I'm going to take it round to the very edge of the back of the frame and cut really really close to that one and tuck that wire in, really smoothing it carefully in. And so you shouldn't see the join really, basically. You don't want to see the join between the two. It's very similar to the way we added those wires in when I fractured the wire earlier on. Again, a similar thing with this side. And uh, cut close to this side with the flush cutter pliers and smooth it down with the very tips in a smoothing motion of the chain node pliers tips. Now looking at this leaf now, what can we do? We can just um, make these little wires, these little veins look a little tiny bit curved. And that's about all we can do, just to make them look a little bit more natural. And everything's in place now. That's lovely. So I've made two larger of the large leaves up. Um, I need to work on the small leaves, which are made in exactly the same way. You see, made in exactly the same way as the large leaves, um, just um, with different spacing. I'm going to come back when I've made one of these up and just talk through the spacing so you know what to do and how many beads to add into the spine. I'll do that in a moment. I need to make four of these large leaves and, and uh, seven of the... Small leaves, five for the necklace and two will be for the earrings for later. I'll come back to you when I've done that. I started working on one of the little leaves here and you can see I've added in the, the um, pink seed beads to the top um, with one set of uh, 025 millimeter wire in the same way that we did the larger leaves. I've also threaded 10 11 green seed beads onto the, the spine um, set of 0.25mm wires and the difference is with this one to the other leaf is that we're not going to add in another bead to the point we're just going to wrap around the point and upwards on either side to start to add in the leaf veins we've still got some spacing here we've got some spacing um, and just make sure that when you add in the first leaf vein you push the bottom four leaf, the bottom four beads down for example down to add in that first leaf vein push them down towards the tip okay and then you can add in the other other leaf veins as you go here are two of the here are two of the smaller leaves um one um, made with the peridone quartz and one made with the seed beads and you can see the slight difference in spacing um that i've used um with the Peridot, I've threaded on one, two, three, four, five, six um, peridot and spaced it out so that I think three were the, the, uh, in between the first lot of veins, then one in between the second and third vein. Um, but where I placed the veins coming back from the 
frame or exactly the same points in both um, leaves. If you take a still shot here and just have a look at them, you can see I put the leaf veins from the um, notches and bends along this leaf at three points and the same, they're the same in each leaf. With the uh, Leveno seed beads, I put one, ten, ten seed beads up the spine and the first, um, and I could have put nine actually, nine would probably do just as well. Um, and if you use nine, you put three at the base, then two, then three, then one in between the veins. Um, and if you use nine, you just do three at the base, I think. And I'll just do that little twitch of all the, the veins, just to neaten them out. Um, and then the smaller leaves are done too. So I'm going to work through making um, four of the larger leaves and um, seven of the smaller leaves. And I'll come back to you when that's all done. Um, and then after that, we'll move on to making jump rings and clasps and then the, then the final assembly of the necklace. So here I've made um, all the leaves now for the necklace and I know I've said all the way through it's five leaves uh, little leaves it's actually four so I'm really sorry I got that wrong so it's four little leaves um, for the necklace and four big leaves for the necklace and you'll have one extra but you can choose your best one and um, two you will need for the um, earrings as well so I put those to one side for later so um, I'm going to go on to make show you how to make jump rings and the clasps and the earring dangles next um, for the necklace. So I'll show you that in the next stages. There are some optional head pin dangles that you can use um, at the, ba the back of the necklace um, to add some detail. And if you want to sort of add them through the, the necklace, you can as well. Um, and so I'm just going to show you how to make those. Um, in the uh, gemstone version um, I use some shell pearls and in fact actually um, you can also use um, natural gemstone I've got some peridot there um, faceted rounds it's just that sometimes um, with these natural gemstones you may not have a drill hole that's large enough um, to fit a standard sort of head pin through so depending on what head pin you have I've got some a featherweight head pin that fits through the smaller drill holes so there is something for every drill hole gauge so a range of head pins is always useful to have in your stash so I'm just going to show you how to make the the wrap loop dangle so I'm going to work with a larger head pin first of all and just show you um, I just threaded it onto the um, ball head pin the little bead little shell pearl bead it's a four millimeter and I'm going to make if I push this out of the way so you can see the background a bit better um, a little right hand turn which the tips of your chain is plier so it's a bend at the top of the bead like so forgive me I've been drawing with my hands always do that and um, bring in some round nose pliers around depending on the size of loop size of loop you make just always make sure you're on the same height of the pliers as you do this um, I'm going to go for about a third of the way down and gripping the wire um, near the bead with both uh, plier tips I'm just going to pull the wire around with my fingers actually so and I'm going to reinsert the, well, just one plier tip the other one and pull that just so I have a bit more control and pull that round so one wire the wire crosses over to form a loop as close to the bead as you can make it so taking these pliers away I'm going to re I'm going to use my chain nose pliers and grip the side of the loop just um, near the top and across the loop so it just holds it in position and with my fingers I'm going to pull the wire tail around the base of the loop um, and depending on it's a small bead so I don't want to wrap um, I don't want to wrap any more because I'll obscure the bead so just once is enough larger beads you can come down um, the whole uh, further down the bead I'm just going to move away so it focuses uh, a bit more around the bead. Um, it's not focusing. I'm going to bring it, bring it away again. You can wrap around the top of the bead a bit more um, and make a nice detail. But the small ones, you don't need to do very much of a wrap. So bringing in some flush cutter pliers, I'm going to cut as close to this um, wrap around the bead as possible using the tips of the flush cutter pliers. A little, little cut there. 
I'm hold, you notice I'm holding on to the tail and the bead so it stops while flying around the place. Remember to wear your glasses when you're working to protect your eyes. So I'm going to bring in the tips of the train nose pliers and just, just do this gentle smoothing motion in the direction of the wire to, to bring this, to smooth this edge down. Because the last thing you want is anything cutting or um, um, snagging against your skin. So that will tuck in quite nicely. So that's one wrap loop dangle. I'll just show you that with a finer gauge what you can, how you need to, to work. It's just a little bit sort of, it's really fluid and easy to make, but just, just be aware that it's very delicate. So I'm going to move that away, uh, just bend it away slightly from the top of the peridot. Again, bringing in the pliers, it's very easy to, to pull it round actually. You can pull it round once more to make us, um, you can do your wrap now, or you can pull it round once more to make a double loop and this makes this wire stronger at this point and less likely to, sh to slip through a jump ring so I've done a, like almost like a double loop here press them together and then squash very gently this together pull the wire around the base of the loop I've wrapped a few times here I'm just manipulating moving it around just so I can see where I am and then bring in the flush cutter pliers as close to the bead as possible and very gently push this in to place. So you can see I've just created a slightly stronger or thicker loop here and so that my um, fine gauge head bin won't slip through any gaps in jump rings because a little gap opening up here and you've lost your dangle if, and so adding that extra spiral of wire in just helps to give you a little bit more strength there. So that's a wrap loop dangle made with a featherweight head pin and a standard gauge head pin. Um, and now we're going to move on to making the clasp. We've made the peridot dangle um, and you can now choose to add um, two in um, uh, or you can add in, I've actually chosen in the final design to add in six peridot dangles. So make six of those peridot dangles for the final design. I'm now going to show you how to make the jump rings for the project. And I use basically every little bit of scrap wire I cut off, making all the frames um, and the class and everything like that. But any excess wire you keep in a little box or make straight away into, jump, into coils ready for jump rings. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, the, there are two sizes of jump rings you need for the project. Um, and I'm detailing them by their external diameter. So the external diameter of the jump ring you need are five millimeter and six millimeter external diameter jump rings. And that means um, the outer diameter. And when you hear about inner, inner diameter, it's actually usually referred to the, I'm just zooming in there for a minute, to the uh, mandrel or the inside diameter of the jump ring. And that uh, this mandrel size will determine, the mandrel is the little um, tool that you make um, the jump rings on, that will determine the size of the inner diameter of the jump ring. And the thickness of the wire, which I'm using as one millimeter, will add one millimeter on the outside of the jump ring. So I'm going to use, three millimetres and four millimetre diameter mandrels, which are these two sizes on this particular mandrel. Um, but you can use gizmo mandrels and or um, stepped bell making pliers, all sort of jump ring makers, anything like that, um, which are three millimetre and four millimetre diameter mandrels. And when you add on the one millimetre wire to each of those, you'll get your five millimetre and six millimetre um, external diameter jump rings because you had um, one millimeter for each side. Anyway, let's go and make those jump rings. So um, I'll show you the process of making them. So I'm gonna take my little bit of um, end scrap wire and I'm gonna make them around the, the four millimeter uh, mandrel here. I'm gonna hold, grip the wire tight and then just pull the wire around, making sure the, jump, the wire sits as tightly as possible to the coil um, in front of it. And I'm gonna make quite a few jump rings here or coils or spirals and you can either let it sit on the mandrel which is preferable because the the, the wire will then sort of gain its memory of being 
um, a spiral rather than a flat bit of wire or a straight bit of wire and you let that sit on the mandrel for a few hours even preferably overnight um, but I tend to just pick them off pop them in a box and then cut them the next day and they're less likely to spring apart that way so I made some of the larger jump rings there um, and then once you've made enough of those um, we can cut them so you're going to use uh, flush cutter pliers um, and to make this and if you're um, really experienced you can use a little saw to make them um, but this is just used for uh, making small amounts of jump rings for projects um, that you're just going to use um, small lengths of wire um, scrap bits of wire to make them in the same color as your project so picking up the coil hold it between in your fingers and use the straight edge of your flush cutter plier and present it to the end of the wire coil and cut it like so and this will leave a lovely flush cut straight edge then rotate the pliers so the flush the straight edge is facing the other way and bring it into the spiral cord as close to the first cut as possible and cut the next spiral with the tip of the flush cutter pliers now it will, little, it will pop a little straight jump ring I'll show you, show you a zoomed image, image at, um, um, at the end of this but to show you how flush cut and straight these, these little um, edges are if you use the wrong side of the jump ring or, sorry wrong side of the pliers you'll end up with a triangular point I'll show you one of those so I've, I've presented the wrong edge of the pliers to the wire and I'll do the same to this edge and what I'm going to do a zoom in you'll see the difference of, the, of, of cutting with the wrong it doesn't even like to do it so it'll, it's, it squashes the wire so I'm going to zoom in and show you those two jump rings hopefully that you can see a bit more those two jump rings right um, and we're, we're going to do is zoom in a little bit more we can perhaps see that this one on the right has a triangular point to it and this one on the left has some nice straight edges and I'll show you that with a closure the closure of the jump ring is really important so at the moment you can see they're slightly open so opening and closing a jump ring is the next thing that we need to do and I'm going to use two pairs of chain nose pliers and I'm just going to grip either side of the little join and just rotate almost in a, in a sideways by like opening and closing a gate uh, until they, they grind or, or click together and the little join closes. If you want to, if it doesn't look quite lined up, you can squash either side of the join with a gentle clamp and that will form a lovely flush cut and you can hardly see the closure there. And I'll do that with the cut one I cut badly and you'll see those triangular points will never really sit very close together and you'll see a gap and you can see that that edge is not flush cut it doesn't cut it has a nice smooth sharp sharp surface so that is not a very good jump ring and I won't use that so I'm going to check that away and I'm just going to show you how not to open and close a jump ring as well with this one because I'm going to throw it away do not open a jump ring open and close a jump ring like that because it's really difficult to get it reshape to reshape properly when you, if you open like that to that putting the pulling the pliers outwards and inwards you can do it but you'll end up with an oval squashed misshapen jump ring okay to do it properly bring it back to do it properly you just place the pliers as close as you can you can hold one plier still and then rotate the other plier forwards and backwards if you like. You hear, you can almost hear that the, the wire touching each other. It'll squash across the jump ring. You can see how tight and flush that closure is. You can barely see the join. So that's opening and closing a jump ring. We've made some jump rings. Um, we're, and we're going to use them to link the project together in a minute. I'm just showing you quickly the gizmo mandrels that you need. Um, you can use instead of the step mandrel um, to make up um, the jump rings with. So that's an alternative way. You can probably make a, a lot more jump rings up using 
the longer mandrels uh, of the gizmo mandrels um, and then uh, leave them overnight a bit more easily so that's an alternative method um, for making up your coils for the for the jump rings here you can see um, that I've made a sort of shepherd's hook um, and loop clasp um, to um, finish off the necklace so we're going to make that now um, I've made them with um, about I would say about 20 centimeter of wire uh, one millimeter wire and um, I'm going to start off by making the hook end first so let's do that now let me move this out of the way taking a round nose pliers I'll just zoom in a little bit I think just to yeah okay um, round nose pliers just make a tiny little spiral curl at um, one end of the wire little spiral curl there we go. And then what you need to do um, with that little cut end, which is a bit straighter than the rest, is just cut nibble that off. Maybe two or three. I've probably cut up a little bit too much. Um, probably about two or three, two millimeters or so. Just to cut, make sure this end is quite nice and curved. Recurl it with the tips of your round nose pliers. Recurl it. There we go. Little. So I'm making a little kind of, I suppose, you can see how I'm spiralling it by gripping the wire with round nose pliers at one end and then pulling the wire around the spiral with the other hand. So that's probably enough because I'm making quite a small spiral. And then what I'm going to do is just, you can do this with your hands actually if you like, or you can use a mandrel. So, so you can bring a mandrel in and make a, a, a round curve round it round mandrel for example and that makes a nice shepherd hook shape or you can put it around with your fingers quite happily and shape it with your fingers or even pliers and then I'm not going to add a bead in to this one which I've shown in other tutorials I'm just going to make a very simple loop so um, all you need to do now I suppose yeah that's about right it depends you can vary the length of this hook um, shape um, just by pulling this loop downwards, you want to make it smaller, for example. And um, by the way, um, just make a slight, uh, I suppose, a little bend downwards uh, to straighten this wire. And then what we're going to do is, uh, at this stage, you could hammer this now, um, but I'm going to, I don't know whether to hammer it now at the end. Um, no, I'm going to hammer it at the end. Um, so it doesn't matter you could hammer that bit now but um don't hammer the loopy bit or the wire tail um but i'll hammer it all at the end i think so bring some round nose pliers in and we're going to wrap a loop around the base of um the round nose plier tip so i'm just going to pull the wire around i'm gripping the wire quite tightly between the pliers and then I'm just going to pull it around with my hands it's really the wire is lovely and soft and easy to manipulate. I'm going to pull it outwards again with a little rotational movement of the pliers, pulling it around again just so it makes a nice loop. And then taking bringing some chain nose pliers in, I'm going to grip across the flat surface of the loop, and I'm going to with my hand pull this wire tail around maybe twice. Let's go for twice around the end, around this, this shepherd's hook. You can see so it makes a little lovely little spiral up the up this shepherd's hook. A little tiny pressure side to side will neaten that up. And I'm just going to trim the tail, maybe to say two centimeters, something like that. 15 millimeters to two centimeters is easy enough with flush cutter pliers. And that wire tail can be used for making jump rings. Um, then we're going to use a spiral and make a spiral detail. So I'm just going to again use the tip of my round nose pliers in a very similar way to the method of using uh, for the, um, the end of the hook here. Trim the end and recurl. Before I go too far, I'm just going to do the hammering. So I've got a, the, the, the cast at this stage. So I'm just going to bring in a hammer and a steel block. And I'm going to start to hammer this this clasp. So I'm going to use uh, you can use a range of hammers. I'm going to use it. I can use a two ounce hammer, one ounce hammer, 
or a, a large hammer, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to use a one ounce hammer for this loop to show you how I can get into small deep, small places. So I want this side to be the flattest side. So I'm going to hammer the other side, keeping all this wrap, all this wrap away from the um, the block itself. So I'm not hammering it, this part at all. So I'm just keeping it on the edge of the block and I'm going to hammer this side. So you'll hear a little bit of a noise now. Yeah, it's flattened that bit. I'm now going to hammer this loop here. And that's um, made that nice and flat. Now we're going to hammer this larger section. I can put it onto the edge of the block like that. I'm holding this bit firmly. And you can use a larger face hammer or a smaller face hammer. It doesn't matter. I'm just showing you the larger face hammer now. So I'm hammering all along the clamp, the, um, the wire. I can use a smaller face if you like as well. And that's work hardened the clasp slightly and also created a lovely flat reflective surface. As you can see how, how, what, what's happened when I turn it over, you can see that lovely reflective surface. Now what we can do, we can reshape this a little bit so I can make this a little bit more curved. If it's not quite, if it looks too sort of elongated, you can reshape that. And also I want this now to fit over the, the clasp itself. So you can either push it into place like so, just a gentle um, push and a squeeze will make that fit into place. That's a lovely sort of detail to the clasp here. You can wire that into place with a little bit of wrapping if you like, um, but they're usually quite secure um, and they don't catch on clothing. So there we are, that's the hook end and we're now going to move on to the loop end of the clasp. We've made the um, hook end of the glass, but now we're going to make the loop end of the glass. So taking a similar length of wire, about 20 centimetres long, I'm going to just make a large loop. And you can vary the size of the loop um, um, to size for your necklace. So I'm going to sort of make one that's about two centimetres long. So I'm just going to just move this around with my fingers, really. It's the easiest thing to do. The heat of my fingers will make this into a nice teardrop shape with wires crossing over each other. Now um, you can make it, a, you can change the shape with just a gentle squeeze and, and shapes with it with chain nose class. So all I'm doing is a slight, you can see a slight little move, little nibble there, little move there to make this into a nice shape. Now this shorter end, I've moved, I've made it this loop about halfway along the wire because I use quite a long length of wire. Um, this There is a shorter end which I'm just going to point to the side because I want to use that to wrap round this loop and the other end I'm just going to straighten out with a straight bend and I'm going to stroke along the wire just to straighten it out a little bit. So the next thing I can do is just to make a wrap loop around this larger loop of the wire of the for the of the class. So I'm going to grip quite close to where I've crossed the wire of each other and use my hand just to pull this wire will run once around and pop it to one side. I can trim that wire tail down to say, gosh, about two millimetres again, two centimetres again. There we go. Keep that wire tail. So I've got it looking like that. Now I'm going to turn this around because I used, used to like to work to one side um, with my pliers. And I'm just, just going to push this this wire tail just to, to one side um, outwards in the opposite direction to the first wire tail, bringing in some round nose pliers to make a loop around the base in a very similar way, just slight movement of that loop, very similar way to making all the other wrap loops we've made. So bring that out of position and just just slightly changing the size of the loop with, with that you either move um, inwards or outwards just to with this rotational movement just to change the size of the loop slightly just make sure it matches up with the size of the loop for the other side of the other class so it looks nice and then what I'm going to do is again grip around this loop pull it around once so that the wire tail faces the other way 
and trim that one. You can trim that a little bit shorter perhaps because I, I don't want the loops exactly the same size. They look they look quite attractive then over the clasp. So I'm going to wire curl these now. Again using exactly the same techniques that we used for making all the other curls. So I'll curl those into place. And I tend to do things at the same time. So that I'll make the first um, curl on either side then bring in some flush cutter pliers and get rid of those straight ends. The straight ends tend to be very work hardened as well so it's really hard to to do much with them so it's better to get rid of them and also you've tended to grip onto them so that sometimes they may be marked or just not very very nice. So I'm just going to bring these in, not do too much with them, don't bring them too close over the loop. I'm just going to make this one a little bit smaller, this loop, so with a little with a little, slight, little side to side squeeze here, I can make this loop a little bit smaller and then bring it in, bring it in with another another movement of the round nose pliers. So I'm going to do some hammering here to, to bring us in detail. I forgot to say when I was hammering the um the I'll bring the slip bring in the steel bolt. I forgot to say when I was hammering the shepherd's hook, I made sure I put more pressure maybe on this loop. To make this a bit thicker and wider, a bit like we did with the roses, um, and less thickness here. Um, but you can do all, play around with all sorts of ways of of um, creating a, a reflective surface. So I like varying the thickness along the clasp because it looks quite nice. So we can do a similar thing here. Um, I'll hammer these loops first with a small faced hammer. Um, let's go for the one ounce, which is a small one, so I can really get in. Again, just in the same way as we did the hook end. That's it, and then move this round to hammer these side loops, side, side curls I mean. Just make sure you don't hammer the, anything crossed over each other because it will fracture the wire. Because it will just bash against each other and break itself. And moving round here, I'm just going to hammer this, this larger loop. I'm going to use a larger faced hammer, but you can use a small faced hammer if you like. hammer more along the end and put more pressure on the end of this this loop relative to the sides to create to create a detail there we go so taking that around and off you can see how beautiful that reflective surface is i'm just going to move these loops into position so with a side to side squeeze side to side over this this i'm going to bring this into into position sorry that that's probably the easiest but you can see how i'm gripping moving this into place Similar thing to on this side, just lift it up and over. Oops, and you can see you're almost creating like a little mini heart feeling to this clasp. You could wire a little bead into this center here, which would look lovely, and then squash this over in, into place. Just going to elongate that slightly so that it squashes over that one quite nicely. Just going to move that out of position just to make it look nice. There we go. Squash it into position. It'd be lovely to we we um you can just wrap a little pearl into that space or a little bit of peridot or something like that. A bit of rose quartz. Um and that would look really beautiful. Or what else could you do? We can we can put this over the other one. You can do all sorts of things. You can have the curls facing the other way, if you like, um over each other. So um, there's all sorts of things you can do, or you can trim away one of these wire tails to nothing and just have one wire curl over. So there's all sorts of ways you can manipulate and play around with this design. So there is your clasp. I'm just going to slightly do that. And I'll show you that's that's the two clasps ready. Um, the hook and the eye ready for necklace assembly um, in the next stage. I'll just zoom in so you can see them a bit better. Here you can see I've got all the components assembled for the necklace. I've got five roses of the different sizes, uh, four large leaves, five little leaves. I've got some little period dangles and the clasp. 
And I've also got um, some jump rings of the different sizes um, that we need for the to make up the design. We need um, 20 of the 6 millimeter external diameter and about 64. 64 for the necklace. You might need a couple more of those, a few more of those for the earrings, but 64 of the 5 millimeter external diameter jump rings and um, to, to make up this design for an 18 inch necklace and you can always vary the number of leaves at the back of the necklace and just do uh, paired um, jump rings and uh, you can that means you can make it a 16 inch if you want to or add in more jump rings at, at, the, at the clasp if you want to make it a longer necklace so we're going to start to assemble uh, the I'll show you the the uh, junctions between the two roses two roses first and then we'll show you um, a little bit more um, as you assemble the necklace up to the clasp later and you will need two sets of chain nose pliers which are used for opening and closing jump rings so first of all we're going to put some triples of jump of the five millimeter jump rings oh first of all close maybe close two six millimeter jump rings ready and you can put them on so a little a seesaw action and to close these jump rings up so i'm just going to close two of those for this linkage so you need two of those and you'll need six of the five millimeter jump rings um, for the links across the two roses and you'll need two to add on the leaf dangles so i think it's something like eight for each each individual connection between jump rings eight five millimeter extend one two three four five six four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of those. So um, let's start adding them on. So I'm going to add on one, first of all, open a five millimeter jump ring. And oh, the other thing you've got to do is just make sure all these little junctions are closed at the base of the loop as, as much as you can. You can see this one's quite open. So I'm just going to close that up a bit. That means that the jump rings won't fall out of the of these little um loops and they'll stay in place um there we go so that's that's done i'll just do that one as well so it's all closed up nicely just a little squeeze side to side of the base of the loop we should do that so i've opened one five millimeter jump ring and i'm going to pop it through one of these loops just with one set of chain nose pliers just holding on to gripping onto the jump ring i'm just going to put the two six millimeter jump rings on oops onto this before I close it just to save me a bit of time I'll just move this out of the way I think it's going way over the place work on a bead mat if you can it's just because um, it's easier to photograph on a white backing and um, the bead mat just stops it everything sliding around and also has numbers so you can measure the length of your necklace easily um, so I'm just going to just close the jump ring with a little closing mo movement with both chain nose pliers just check that's closed nicely and I always just squeeze either side of the join if I can if it hasn't quite met nicely there we go so I've got one jump ring on just going to open another jump ring and thread it through the three and another one and a third, just passing it through the, the so I like, I have three, you could just get away with two, um, three is really good to stop the, um, the, the, everything rotation, rotating about and keep things in their plane and lying flat. If you only have one jump ring, number one, it's not strong enough. Number two, things can sort of move about and rotate around and not lie flat so i do it for stability just check making sure that's closed nicely because that isn't really closed properly so i want to make sure that's closed really nicely which one was the one that look, looked like it wasn't probably that one just to make sure all the short all the jump rings are closed really well make sure they're all neat and close there was one that looked there we go that one looks as if it's not closed properly 
let's get into that. Are oh, you sure that's closed? Where's that gone? There we are. That's better. And then that that's um, investment for the future. There we are. That's the one. It wasn't closed properly um, because I don't want that linkage to break or be weak for later. So now we're going to go on and add the other rows. I'm just going to put one jump ring in there and then uh, just to show you it. And then we're going to let's put one jump ring on and then just pop the, ne the other rows on there through that loop sending the jump ring through the loop, close the jump ring with both pliers. I'm going to add another two jump rings to that connection and then come back to you to add on the leaves in a moment. Right, I've got that connection uh, nicely in place between the two roses. I've, I'm working on the large rose and then one of the medium roses on one side. Um, and I've got a little leaf here ready to join in and this can be a little bit fiddly but we'll get there in the end. I'm just going to put um, an open 5mm jump ring through one of the side loops or the top loops at the top of the leaf and then pop it through the 6mm um, jump ring linkage between the two roses, closing that. I'm just going to get another 5mm jump ring. And if you feel that it doesn't stretch properly, use a six millimeter jump ring just to stretch across the, the gap. I'm rotating that round. I'm going to thread it through this pair of, pair of jump rings and now through this little loop at the other side of the leaf, just wiggling and jiggling. You might need to move the beads out of the way. It should be all right. There we go. And then use the other little tip of the chain nose bar just to close that jump ring. And you've got that connection in place and uh, let's just check I've got it around the right way because last thing I want is to make is that all right yeah I've, what I've done just make sure the flat surfaces at the surface of the roses to the front um, so that you've got all the hammered surfaces at the back and the little beads of the of the leaf are facing to the front and um, that's all in place so we've got one connection made with a little leaf dangle in place with all the jump ring uh, jump rings um, used to connect them. So I'm going to work around all the other roses, um, popping the same connection in between them all with a little leaf dangle. And I'm going to come back when we are ready to add on the side leaves. So I'll come back when we're ready to do that. Now here you can see I've linked all the roses together now. Um, with the um, triple links of 5mm EDs and the 6mm, a pair of 6mm um, linked to the leaves, um, little small leaf dangles with 5mm external diameter jump rings. And I've done it all the way around the roses. Now we're just going to attach these leaves, start to attach these leaves on either side. And the first linkage is um, a, just like this one, 3 and 3 with a with a pair of three and three of five with a pair of six linking these two loops. So I'm going to do that on either side. I'm going to do that on either side and then come back to you um, when we uh, are ready to attach the next leaf. So now here you can see I've joined all the roses together with those um, triples of five millimeter external diameter jump rings with, with pairs of six millimeter jump rings and I've linked the leaves with pairs of five millimeter external diameter jump rings um, to the six millimeter jump ring. So those linkages are all the same all the way around. And I've started to join the leaves and the leaves are joined with triples of five millimeter external diameter jump rings linked to a pair of six millimeter external diameter jump rings. So they're quite simple. Um, I'm going to attach the next set of leaves and these are um, attached slightly differently because we're going to use, um, we're going to link five millimeter external jump rings to these loops here um, to join them to six millimeter external diameter jump rings. So I'm going to do those and then come back to you when they're finished. So um, you can see that I've started to add in the, the next pairs of leaves up. Um, you do need six peridot angles actually for this, this design. Um, so um, we're going to add those in as well. Um, so I've added um, the, the 
two five millimeter jump rings to a pair of six millimeter jump rings on this side but i haven't quite connected it to the leaf here on this side i have started to so i've added in um the the, the pair of five millimeter jump rings to the top loops of this leaf six millimeter jump rings and a triple of five millimeter jump rings to the base loop of this leaf but we're going to add in um a peridot dangle so you will also need um, I think six extra jump rings to so the five millimeter jump rings I told you. So I said we needed 64. We'll actually need 70 jump rings if we're going to add these in. So I'm just going to show you adding a jump ring in um, to this connector just to add in this connection here. I think we'll go for um, to add in a peridot dangle, dangle. There we go. Let's pop it in to the six millimeter pair. Add in little dangle really make sure you close this jump ring really really firmly especially if you're using a, a thinner gauge jump ring uh, sorry thinner gauge head pin just make sure it doesn't slip out and then we've got one of those so um i'm going to complete the necklace now i'm going to add in um i'm going to connect all the leaves together i'm going to connect up to the clasp i'm going to add all the peridot angles and we'll talk through the finished necklace um, at the end in a moment now here you can see I've assembled the entire necklace. I've added in six um, little dangles here. I'm sorry I told you to do two, but it's actually six that you need. Um, they are um, peridot um, um, faceted um, four millimeter, but they can be five or six millimeter and they can be crystals in the same color um, if you haven't got peridot to hand. So um, what I've done is link those to the six millimeter pairs um, with a five millimeter jump ring through that through them um, and that final linkage up the top near the clasp is a pair of five millimeters linked to a pair of through the top loops of the leaf um, to a pair of um, six millimeter um, jump rings and to a triplet of six, five millimeter up to the clasp this makes an 18 millimeter necklace uh, sorry 18 inch necklace and this is suitable for for a lot of people um, and you, if you want to vary this length you can add more jump rings here in in triples in triples of the five millimeter jump rings up to a longer class so you can extend that with with just extended sort of chain mail linkages that, um, like this uh, maybe like that connector here and just extend them with a few more of those you can make it longer and if you want to make it shorter you could take one of these leaf pairs out um, and um, just put chain mail back to the length these the linkages again like this um all the way back up to a class and vary the length you can do all sorts of things just to vary the length and use the leaves in another project so here you can see the, the necklace these ones this is the one made up in seed beads i'll put photo stills at the end and i'm also going to make a silver version and um, talk you through some of that because I'll be making it very slightly differently just to show the, you the variation of of how you could add in um, 0.4 millimeter wire so I'll do that too so there we are um, also we're going to move on to doing the earrings next we're now going to make um, these rose quartz um, and peridot earrings or you can make them with the beads and you can see I've actually filled in the um, rose pattern with um, um, rose quartz in the petals using 0.25 millimeter wire um, in the petals. I'm going to show you that, that technique. You'll also need to make um, two little leaves in exactly the same way as you make the leaves for the, um, the necklace. You'll need four five millimeter external diameter uh, little jump rings and you'll need two shepherd hooks um, earring findings to complete oh, where have I put that to complete the earrings um, so these ones I've made I'll move that out of the way these ones I've made with peridot and rose quartz and you can see how I filled in all the petals round um, with 0.25 millimeter wire zigzagging in between the petals and um, in this set, I didn't hammer the the actual design um, 
and that's worked quite well. And this and these these ones I have hammered. I've used um, just just the outer petals, not the inner spiral. Um, I've made mirror image um, little roses, mini roses. I've made them using this lower template, and I made them with thirty centimeter lengths of not point. Oh, sorry, thirty centimeter lengths. In fact, you can get away with twenty centimeter lengths of not point eight millimeter wire. Uh, and I made them in mirror image and made them using those mirror image techniques that we used in a necklace. So I've got those ready to add in uh, the beads. I'm going to use seed beads for for this little these little roses. So you know you've already probably um, you've already made the leaves when you made the necklace. You've got everything else. Um, I think there's anything else I need to tell you? Uh, no, I think we'll get started. Um, adding in some beads to here so you, so you can see the techniques um, it's fairly sort of random you don't have to make them exactly the same um, in symmetry um, although it's nice to have them fairly the same size um, because they will be sitting either side of the head and they're very organic so as long as they're mirror image and um, they're about the same size um, that should be fine so what we're going to do is start adding some beads in and we'll see how it goes before I get started, just to reiterate, when you've made these little earrings, there'll be a little bit of adjustment, these little roses, you'll be a little adjustment um, with the pliers, make sure these little spirals fit side by side and not over each other. The only bits that need, sit, need to sit over each other are the two very inner circles, which you can just centralise with, with the pliers, uh, but everything else really wants to sit. You can see how I've squashed it out with these these inner petals sitting side by side um, and I'll come back to you when I've added some 025 millimeter wire into the center of these roses um, right I'm going to start to add some 025 millimeter wire through the center of this rose and I'm just going to wrap a few times here um, using one end of about a meter of wire and actually you can use work with shorter pieces of wire and add them in through the rows if it makes it easier and if it breaks you can add a bit of wire in so it's not the end of the world if it does break I'm just going to wrap this a few times around the center I'm not going to trim the wire in just yet until I've actually put, get, got my first bead wraps across um, because if I use any tension I don't want to pull this wire wrap out of out of its um, place so I'll do that um, I'll trim the end um, I'm actually just just um, wrapping around just where the start of the spiral starts and I wrap them about two or three times here um, and there's almost a space here I'm going to do one more wrap round until I get to space I suppose I brought the wraps down to, to where there's a, a place where I can start to add what, what a bead in and these beads are quite small actually um, so that's quite good really um, so I can add them into the sort of corner areas of these petals so I've got that down there I'm just going to thread on uh, squashing these these two frames together and it'll just take a little bit of wiggling and jiggling you'll eventually get the hang of this so I've just got one um, bead on and I'm just going to get my pliers out of the way because I know that I'm going to catch the pliers in in uh, in the process of this I know it I threaded a, a an 11 0 pink seed bead on you can see onto the wire so it sits into the frame and I'm just going to quite simply wrap this is why it's probably easier to wrap, um, to work in shorter lengths of wire um, I'm just very lazy and don't like adding wires in so I tend to work with the long longer pieces but for demonstration it takes ages to pull the wire through so I'm just going to press that bead into place holding it into position with one hand I just wrap around the frame with the other a few times again as with all 0.25 millimeter wire you just got to watch that it doesn't um, start to kink as you pull things through it's really easy to do that and I'm just going to wrap around here until I reach a, a point which I can actually start to traverse back and add another row of beads into the return into the return uh, pass so I'm going to do that and come back to you so I'm going to wrap along this outer edge of this 
jagged petal until I get to a point where I can add a bead in with an inner pass. I'll be back with you in a minute. Sorry, I've wrapped along this outer um, jagged spiral um, until I've reached a point where I can add in a couple more beads. So I've threaded two more beads onto the um, onto the wire. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to just add one. What you can do is basically just test each time. Will two beads fit into there? No, one will. So let's just add the one. Some of these um, frame spaces will allow you to add two in, uh, but not this one. So it's worth a little check. So this one, I'm going to go back to the, it's difficult to say now, when I'm going to go to the, I suppose, yeah, going to the inner area here. Just along the inside spiral. Oops, it daisy. Just make sure I don't go out of camera. And then I've got that on, yeah, and I'm gonna pull that down. Be careful not to again not to kink this wire. And I've added this bead and I'm going to um oh, I've just caught myself into the little loop of mistake. No, I'm okay. I'll add that bead into there. So I'm gonna wrap along here and catch this little inner notch as I go and then wrap along to the next point which I can add a bead and I'll show you that. Here you can see I've wrapped around or wrapped along this uh, little rose and trapped, I suppose caught together these two points where the little inner jagged edge touches, touches the circle and I've wrapped along the circle until I'm ready to add another beading I'll, I'll do that in a minute but also at this point I'm just going to trim the back here where this other wire tail is just on that inner circular edge pulling it tight so it's right on the inner edge cutting right on the inner edge of the spiral and I then will put the points of my chain nose pairs right into there and smooth that wire down it, you're quite if you want to work with 0.4 millimeter wire you can um, and it'll it'll work really well and add a bit more strength especially if you're using it this as a connector in a necklace for example so I made up these in one millimeter wire uh, and use 0.4 millimeter wire to add in um, um, roses in, in beads into the roses as a connector let me get that to show you I'll do that. Yeah, there you go. So I've, I've, they come out slightly bigger, but um, I've used 0.4 millimeter wire in, in that one, in that set, with one millimeter wire. So you can use that, um, and that's absolutely fine. Um, so I'm going to add in, as I've trimmed that bit of wire, I'm just going to add in some beads around, all around these petals, in exactly the same way as I've done this, trapping. Um, or binding around both frames at points where these notches touch against the inner circle of wire. And that, there's a point at which we get to here where you'll need to bind around this, this point here as well. And that's just the point where we start to bind the rows together. Here and here, you need to bind this together. And that actually notches, that actually, sorry, cinches the whole rose together and fixes it all together. So, oops, it's gone out of, out of view. So work around the rose, adding in beads into these petal spaces here, attaching, also binding around these notch points and also binding at this point all around all three and this point around both inner on the other side of the loop and, and just the start of this petal and that tr brings the whole frame together with its strength so that it's, it's, it doesn't sort of pull apart. So that's a really important crucial point to, to bind around here and I'll, I'm going to work around to this point, talk you through, through that point, then work along to the end of the, um, well that's really sort of, when you get to this point you'll start to be attaching this, work around here and then when you get to that one, that's when you can bind around all three. Okay, so I'm going to get to this point first and just um, show you that bit. And then work around to the end of the rows and show you that bit. Here you can see I've um, 
work around these these petals, adding in beads. I've added in two beads into there, pressing the beads into the the space uh, until I've got to a point where I might be able to. In fact, actually, I'd forgotten to tell you, you do also have to attach this little inner spiral here, just at this point. So, just before you get to this top loop, um, the sm the large loop is the top loop, the small loop loop is the base loop for the leaf. And I'm going to pass this, wrap this through the central spiral and then wrap, I'm sorry, bind to the central spiral and the inner spiral about four or five times, about four or five times basically to, to pull this together as well. Um, and as you work around the spiral, there's a spacing the spacing will will um, become a little more, bit more easier. Everything will sit next to each other much more easily. So it does all become much more easy as you as you work round. So you can see I've just bound that together now with maybe a few. I'm just pulling it a little bit with um, three three or wrap four wraps for strength uh, because it's you're using 025 millimeter wire. You do need a few more than just two wraps often in a, play, in a certain point, just so that you can keep it all um, together. Oh, it's not sorry, it's not in focus. I don't know why it's not in focus? I change that. Is that going to be in focus a bit better? Let's try. So just make sure that you wrap around these points here. Um, several times just so that you wrap these uh, you add strength to the attachment um, just make sure here you can see I've, I've crossed the wire over so that before I even go to the next bit I'm going to re undo that um, because the last thing you want is is wires crossing because it number one it just makes them vulnerable to fracture so I'm going to undo that little one which means I'm probably going to have to and do lots of little knots and things like that in the wire. It's just one of those things. Sometimes you just have to make sure putting my nail in place in front in, in front of the wrap we've just done, it prevents you overlapping. There we are, that's a bit better. It's because I've got an end of a of a coil, it's just made it slip over and want to cross over. It's just one of those things. There we are. Three little wraps in place there. Third wrap going in now, and then I'm going to pass along or carry on along. That see now you band that together nicely. I'm going to just wrap along the inner spiral. I might even be able to add another bead in. If I do, I haven't got enough space, and I end up on an outer edge. Um, basically, you can either wrap along this outer edge and bind to here. Or we can pass the wire back again without just without a bead to the inner coil. Um, it doesn't really matter. So if you feel that you're in a spot where you need to get back to the inner coil and you haven't got space to add in a bead, um, just pass the wire back on its own. It won't show up too much actually in the spiral work. So I'm just going to wrap along along the inner spiral on its own. Once so I think I'm going to try and see if I can add another bead into this space because it'll look nice if I can pack another little bead in to this space there. So I'm going to do that. There we go. I'm just going to thread a copper bead on the onto the end of the wire. So I got my hand right arm right in the way. It's only because I've got the bead much on the right hand side of me. Here we go. Just pop the little bead down. Get it sitting into the spiral. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm testing that. Is it going to work? Do you know what? I don't think, unless I, what I'm going to do is pull that wire, let those around a little bit, fit, see if I can fit into that space. Yes, now I can. Press it into, into the place. So I've made a bit of space for it by, by, by pushing these beads around further into that petal with my fingernail. Then pressing the bead into into the space in the petal with my with my thumb and forefinger, then I'm working with the other hand just to bind around the 
the um, wire here. Now at this point, I've got a choice perhaps. I don't think I'm going to attach it just yet, you know, because I want to be able to use any space to be able to work around. So I'm not going to attach to this end yet. I'm leaving that still loose. I'm going to work around, just wrap along here um, and get to a point where I can start to just bind at the top here. So I'm now going to bind around just a little side to side squeeze and this is to be very very gentle with these pliers because you don't want to fracture the wire. I'm going to push this pull this up together and if, if it doesn't quite fit together with the pulling of the wire you don't want to fracture your wire just just pinch that in with your pliers so that you can start to just bind around the um, inner spiral and the outer frame there just a couple of times then I'm going to pass the wire along yeah maybe three because it'll just it'll it'll just it'll they'll sit next to each other a bit more easily if you've done three wraps again it's 0.25 millimeter wire and they need a bit more um bulk in there um multitudes of wraps to add in um so you can either go straight to that point which i think is fine do that straight over and you can see now i've trapped the very edge the base of that loop and pulled it around towards the inner spiral and I've wrapped around all those points there and that started to attach that together you can see that that's lovely so I'm just going to do that um, three times here yeah three times here and then I'm going to wrap along that inner spiral and add beads all, all, and all around here. Um, and I don't think I'll check on the one I did before. No, I I didn't add any. I didn't add any connections. I didn't connect to here at all until I got to this point here. So I'm going to work all the way around here, just weaving in between the two inner spiral and the outer spiral. Just cinching them together here adding in the beads until I get to this point and when I get to this point I'll come back to you and show you the last little bit so you can see that I've um, wrapped round all the way round the outside and all through the petals of the little rose adding in beads um, I added in three there and I probably could have got away with just two there that's the only time I added in three the rest of the times it's ones and twos catching in zigzagging catching in these little zigzag areas and then going inwards and outwards inwards and outwards um adding in beads i did uh, find myself at a point where i reached on the outside of the um frame here and i wrapped across the base loop and that, that'll help trap the leaf in place then wrap back inwards um to add in beads these the next area of petal i reached i've wrapped all the way around making sure the beads sit nicely inside the petal and then I've reached a point where I can just attach this final frame together. It, this is a chance for you to just adjust the frame into position if you feel that it's distorted or anything like that so you can push things into place and, and just move things about if they're not not quite sitting symmetrically and if you if your rose on the other on the opposite side on the mirror image side is a different size you can adjust things at this stage um, so that it looks really nicely mirror image and you can do that by putting one over the other and just making sure the second one you're making is spaced out the same as the first so that's quite a good way of doing it so what I'm doing is just wrapping around the edge of this um, near the tip and, add, and wrapping it to the innermost part of the frame near that loop a few times and it just makes sure that everything finally gets bound together that's quite good there bound together and then I can reach a point perhaps where I can just wrap it round a little bit of that inner frame once or twice and then uh, 
cut and tuck in that that wire end so it's all cut tucked in nicely nearly done so that's that'll be one side nearly done so I'm just going to wrap that in find the wire point at the back I squashed everything nice and flat so it looks nice and flat where does that come out yes cut quite close to the frame tuck that in again no sharp edges that's done now so um you can take a screenshot of that, but it might be better when I've done both of them. I'm going to work on the other one um, and show you. Um, I'm just going to work a mirror image. And if you want to just turn this over, it'll help you when you work on this one, place the beads in the right direction. So this is the back of this one, the front of this one. And I'll be able to place all the beads at the same place as much as I possibly can to mirror image the other one. Um, like so. So I'll come back to you when I've done that. Here you can see I've made um, two roses. In fact, I've placed one over the other so you can see I've tried to make it as symmetrical as possible in the mirror image. And if I turn that over the right way around, you've got two little rose components. I've got um, two little leaf components. I've got the jump rings and the shepherd hoods hooks ready to make up the earrings. So now I'm just going to um, uh, attach the leaves to the roses with the jump rings and I'll just do one so again use chain nose pliers a pair of, of them will be great pop the um, jump ring through the top loop of the leaf or one of the top loops and through the base loop of the, of, of the little rose But mangled that jump ring, sorry about that. And the other the other jump ring goes through this a gentle opening of the jump ring. Thread through the base loop and a little wiggle. Little wiggle through this top loop of the leaf. Just grab. Yeah. It should be all right. I'm just going to just grab the top of that jump ring as it comes through and it will just close nicely if I just make sure that the two ends meet nicely. And um, that's lovely. So that's that part done. And to attach the shepherd's hook, there'll be a little open loop at the end, um, which you just open in a similar way. You just gently bend it open. Don't open it like that or else it won't close properly. Slip this on, making sure that the front hook of the shepherd's hook faces to the front of the earring. And then just close it nicely. It'll squeeze perhaps outside the side to make sure it closes properly. And that's one earring made. I'm just going to make up the other one and come back to you when I've finished that. So here are the earrings all made up now. These are the ones that I've made with rose quartz and peridot. And these are the ones made with the blush pink and the green seed beads. Um, and I hope you enjoy making them. They're a perfect accompaniment to the necklace. And you can see the different techniques of adding in the seed beads to add colour to the roses. So um, I'm just going to move on to showing you the silver version and um, very slight differences and design variations with that. So here's the, the silver version and I've um, started to make up, well I've made all the frames. I made all the frames for the roses, for the earrings in 0.8mm wire and all the frames um, for the roses in 1mm wire which I've hammered and all the techniques the same as we did for the roses, for the, for the copper roses. I've made four large leaves I've made six smaller leaves for the dangles and for the earrings and I've made a clasp and you can see here this is where I'm doing things slightly differently so I'm going to move all this away all these other bits away and we'll zoom in on these roses here which we're going to be just showing you the techniques for now it's really similar I suppose to the way we did the combination of the way we did the earrings um, but also you just just not adding beads 
So we worked all the way around from centre, I'm working all the way around from the centre in the spiral wire, the inner spiral, attaching um, the leaves into, sorry, yeah, the, the petals into place. And you can see, if you screenshot, and I'll do a screenshot of obviously the finished necklace at the end, you'll see the attachment points um, where we're attaching um, or binding this whole structure together, but still maintaining that free um, swirling rose look for the petals. And um, so these are the two mirror image shapes. Remember what you've got to do is just adjust um, the inner curl slightly before we do anything. There you go. Just by, by um, making sure the two inner circles are really close together and overlapping. And everything else will actually fall into place um, as we work around it in fact actually as long as you make sure that the inner spiral and the other and the inner and the jagged spiral don't overlap each other and actually as you work around from from inside to outside that'll that'll um fall into place don't worry so i'm just going to move on to the next stage um, where we're going to attach some wire just quickly um i've used 0.4 millimeter um, wire nice and soft if you can get it um, the soft sort of flexible wire just is easier to work with rather than the harder or half hard wire um, and um, I've used not I will I will use 0.3 millimeter wire or 0.25 millimeter wire for the smaller roses for the delicacies so those for the earrings um, but and that's what I'm going to do um, I'm going to work on um, adding some wire into this one and we'll see how it goes. So moving on to that now. Right, I've got about a um, just over a metre or a metre length of 0.4 millimetre wire. And you can work with shorter lengths as long as um, you've just got to um, add them in. Remember the technique we used to add it in in one of the leaves when I broke the wire. Um, by mistake, you can use that technique just to add in, add in wires. So um, I'm just going to start at the centre of the rows. Um, working very near the end, one end of the 0.4 millimeter wire. So I'm going to pop that through this, the center spirals. I'm going to move this one out of the way so you can just concentrate on this one. Now working with long lengths of wire on de demonstrations is a nightmare because you just have to wait for everything to pass through <laughs> before you you move on to the next thing. So it makes it things a little bit slower. But um, working with longer lengths, if you can get used to it, is great because you don't have so many. Um, add-ins and, and uh, smoothing downs of wire. So I'm going to make sure the longer end of wire is ready um, to work down the spiral. So I need to make sure it's on this side so it can work along to, to this side of the spiral. So I'm going to just put that out of the way slightly and then work with the shorter end as I just bind these two centers together. Once you get this fiddly bit out of the way, it's sort of easier because the rest of the rows will, will hold in place and start to hold in place, which is great. So this is quite important just to do this, this first central attachment. So two attachments here will be fine. I'm just going to make sure that, yeah, that, 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 that they sit over each other. You can see how I've just managed to click that into place a little bit more. Um, another bind around the where this notch, this first notch or this first petal touches against this spiral. So I'm doing two binds here. Just make sure they sit next to each other as tidily as you can. And then bring this um, shorter length up uh, uh, next to that little binding point of the notch and just through the loops. Now because it's a short length of wire, you can use the pliers to pull the wire through and get you a bit more grip because often you you know things slide away and you, you may not get the grip. So you can see how I'm using the pliers to pull the wire through and probably go for about three wraps. You can do it with your fingers but often I find that I don't have as much grip. There we go that's it. A little pull, a little tug with the pliers just tightens up that um, binding wrap. And I'm going to go for three here which I think is enough with 0.4 millimeter wire. I would probably use about five wraps around if you're using 0.3 or 0.25. Squeeze that together slightly. I'm going to turn the rose over 
and just cut that wire end to get out of the way. Again, cut it on the inside edge, well out of the way of any potential areas where it could rub and move out of place. Squeeze it down, squash those together, and then turn the rows back over. You can start to work round. Now, I'm just going to squeeze that together a bit more. Tidy that up a little bit. That's fine. Right, so now you can see almost that first attachment has really started to pull that rose together. I'm going to start to wrap around the, the little loop. The loops in the, both the loops in the middle. There we go. You can see what I'm doing. Just pulling that around quite tight and then threading it back through the central loop. And I'm going to do that a few times and then I'm going to travel away. Well, I'm only going to wrap around the unhammered um, smooth loop. So I'm going to wrap along this little part, this, these, this section here where both loops overlap each other. But at this point here, I need to start to wrap around, around that, that single wire here. I'm going to get to that point, so I'm going to um, come back to you when I'm ready to do that to show you how to do that. So I've now wrapped around both loops until I can reach a point where I can just wrap around the single unhammered smooth wire. And I'm going to bring the the wire, the, the wrapping 0.4mm wire carefully up just so that it can wrap just around just a smooth wire. I'm going to pull the frame around a little bit so that these things just start to sit next to each other nicely. And you can see I'm quite close to that point. Um, and I can and where where the other wraps were, so I'm just going to push them together a little bit to remove any gaps, to remove any gaps at all, um, and to make sure the wraps look as tight and close um, to each other as possible. And you can see on the on the the finished rows here how much I've done that. I've just made sure everything looks as tight as possible all the way around, no gaps at all. Just looks so it has a really nice finish then, and you can really follow the movement of the rows around. So I'm going to carry on wrapping around this rows a few times, and just every so often just slightly push it together. Not too many times. Not, don't do it every time, um, because. You can just weaken the wires a little bit. So I just do every few wraps, just as, as long as you, when you place the wire, I sort of pull it into position and use the actual tension of the wrap to help pull it into, into position nicely, to make sure they lie next to each other. So I'm going to do a few of these. Just every so often, just make sure you make sure that you keep the wire entangled. So smooth along the wire as they go all the time. Um, just to stop any tangles happening and the minute I try and watch for tangles and before they get too tightly knotted you stop that happening and gently go back to the wire and untangle it so all the time be as relaxed as you can because when you're relaxed in your mind the knots really do tend to happen less so I'm just going to pull around I'm going to wrap around to a point where I'm ready to attach to here I'll come back to you in a few moments Right here you can see I've wrapped around that um, central wire, just a few more wraps, um, just on that zone. I've reached a point where I can now bind to this little notch, little petal notch. This is very similar to the way we worked on the copper roses. We're just working with a longer length of wire and continuously all the way around. Um, you do use a little bit more wire but um, and it takes a bit more time but the effect is lovely. So I'm just going to pass the wire over both um, the little notch in the petal base and the smooth wire, making sure the frames lie side by side, not over each other. So really make an effort to do that. I'm just going to do two wraps for these inner petals. And I tended to do like three wraps for the outer ones, just for strength. Two wraps around both, both points and pop the wire in little space here thread it through and now just pass it to the inside edge of that smooth spiral and we're just going to wrap around the smooth spiral only and just keep just just keep that tension on the wire as much as you can because it's 0.4 you can pull it quite 
put it into, into place. If you're using 0.3, you might need a few more wraps at this point um, to put it together. And you might need to adjust the, the rose frame with your pliers a little bit to make sure everything sits side by side. So you can do all that too. Um, but because I'm squashing and keeping everything squashed with this hand, you can see the, the pressure in my thumb and to keep them lying side by side, it, it's, it's helping me um, stop that any overlap happening that shouldn't be happening. Um, now I'm going to wrap along this frame a few times. And then what I'm going to just do is very gently away from these wraps, I'm just going to squeeze or squash that, that wrap where it's passed around both points. Can you see that? And it's just made it flattened it out and made them sit nicely side by side. Just, just one gentle squash with the pliers like that and it will do that. So I'm going to work around the rows, but I'll show you the one that I've done earlier. It's the mirror image. So um, you can see what I've done. I've worked all the way around the rows doing exactly that, just um, winding around that central spiral, catching these petals in turn with little wraps. And you can see where I've um, just also attached the tip of a petal um, at these points here just to just to uh, add a bit more strength. So the best thing for you to do is take a screenshot and what I'll do is I'll, I'll get a, um, um, a screenshot of all the petals done or sorry, a, a, you know, a, um, I'll video a little section of that and you can screenshot it and then what you can do is just check and print it out and you can just check um, that you've got all the attachment points in the right place. When you get um, to the top bit here, you can see I've had to also attach the two points here for strength. Um, when you get to the top point here, just at, I've um, pulled it around so you can see these uh, little loops are at this point nicely lined up. Um, and I've attached, I've wrapped several times at this point. And then on up this petal a little bit, cut the wire on the inside edge and then smooth it around. Smooth the wire tail around here so it fits. It sort of sits nicely and there's no sharp edges. So run your fingers over it. So that's basically it. I'm going to work on all the roses and all the leaves and then come back to you um, with them all and uh, show you the finished necklace. You can take a screenshot um, of all the roses and and um, the attachment points, and uh, we can. Um, you can choose to make it up as in the silver version or with the methods in the copper version. And they're both, both are so effective. And also adding in beads as well as we did in the earrings. So there's all sorts of ways you can adapt this design. So I look forward to seeing what you make. I'm going to move on and show you the finished silver necklace. Um, when I've completed all of that, I'll come back to you um, with that. And we'll just talk through it a bit, little bit more. Here is the silver um, version of the necklace all made up and you can see that I've swirled um, the or wrapped the 0.4 millimeter wire all the way around the inner um, coil and attached it to the petals at um, the point so they meet um, around the coil and it just creates a lovely flowing very very um, structurally stra strong design. It just uses a little bit more, 0.4 millimeter wire than with the other um, method. The leaves are made in exactly the same way, except that I've used 0.4 millimeter wire um, for the veins um, in the large leaves and 0.3 millimeter wire in the um, smaller leaves. And you can see that there's slightly thicker veins here. They might be more structurally strong in a necklace um, and I could get um, two 0.4 millimeter wires through these beads. It's just that it's important to know how to do it with a finer wire if you can't, if you're using very small gemstone seed beads with much smaller drill holes, and you can use the 0.25 millimeter to 0.3 millimeter diameter wire for those um, beads. So, um, and I, instead of um, single peridot dangles, I've used some of the seed beads on head pids as dangles around the necklace. Um, this is sterling silver, but you make it in um, plated um, copper wire um, just as easily. And it gives a lovely, fresh, beautiful um, finish. It would be wonderful for a bridal necklace as well as 
any other occasion. So I do hope you enjoy making um, this design as well as the uh, the rose gold or copper um, tone version. So um, I look forward to seeing what you make. Well, I hope you've enjoyed working through the tutorial today um, and I very much look forward to seeing what you make. So please tag me on Facebook. You can find me Rachel Norris Jewellery Designer um, on Facebook and I very much look forward to seeing um, what you make. So please tag me um, and here you can see me wearing the necklaces. You can see how nicely they fit around the neckline and how they sit in the ear. So um, just enjoy. Um, if you need any help, message me on the Jewellery Designer page um, and I'll try and help out and I look forward to seeing what you make.